Where the snows that fall are a trifle wider Where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter That's where the West begins We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming We're Wyoming in a bank Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be For a place to relax, sip on your favorite specialty lattes or tea, and find the best gifts for any occasion, Storyteller is the place for you. Books brimming with compelling stories, gifts for the kids like Legos and coloring projects, and something for your family and friends like hats, jewelry, or a bag of award-winning Mountain Air Roasted Jackrabbit Java. To learn more, visit StorytellerYO.com or swing by at 524 Broadway in Thermopolis. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details only at Sutherland's. You work hard for those you love, putting in long hours because your family's hopes and dreams are worth saving for. That's why Bighorn Federal offers multiple ways to save. Our products can help you start saving for more immediate needs and future goals today. Talk to your local branch about an interest-bearing checking or savings account, education IRA, Roth IRA, CD, or health savings account from Bighorn Federal. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. A proud sponsor of this broadcast is Bailey Enterprises. For over 50 years, Bailey has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey. I'm Travis Winger. I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And we do, you know, I pride myself on helping people with financial planning, uh, achieving whatever goals are most important to them. The most valuable thing you have when it comes to planning for your future is time. The, the sooner you're, you start and the more detailed your plan is, the better chance of success you have. First timers are my favorite people to work with because they're hungry to learn and coming to see me doesn't cost anything. I don't charge for appointments, I don't charge for anything. Come in, talk to me, and all you'll leave with is a little bit more knowledge than you came in with. Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Travis Winger, 435 Arapahoe Street, Thermopolis. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. Looking for a clean, comfortable room in Thermopolis? Quality Inn of Thermopolis offers great rates with your choice of king, queen, or family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Reserve your room today. Call 307-864-5515. Amenities include free hot breakfast, pet-friendly, premium free Wi-Fi, indoor pool, truck parking, and more. Reserve your room today by calling 307-864-5515. Quality Inn of Thermopolis.
Stop in to Vicklund Pharmacy in Thermopolis to see what a hometown pharmacy really feels like. It's the only locally owned and operated pharmacy in town, and they are a compounding pharmacy to boot. They offer prescriptions, medical equipment, Medicare open enrollment, medication therapy management, and more. Vicklund Pharmacy can save you time and money. The service you deserve from the neighbors you trust. Vicklund Pharmacy, conveniently located inside Max Market in Thermopolis. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. to relax, sip on your favorite specialty lattes or tea, and find the best gifts for any occasion. Storyteller is the place for you. Books brimming with compelling stories, gifts for the kids like Legos and coloring projects, and something for your family and friends like hats, jewelry, or a bag of award-winning Mountain Air Roasted Jackrabbit Java. To learn more, visit StorytellerYO.com or swing by at 524 Broadway in Thermopolis. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details only at Sutherland's. You work hard for those you love, putting in long hours because your family's hopes and dreams are worth saving for. That's why Bighorn Federal offers multiple ways to save. Our products can help you start saving for more immediate needs and future goals today. Talk to your local branch about an interest-bearing checking or savings account, education IRA, Roth IRA, CD, or health savings account from Bighorn Federal. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. A proud sponsor of this broadcast is Bailey Enterprises. For over 50 years, Bailey has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey. I'm Travis Winger. I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And we do, you know, I pride myself on helping people with financial planning, uh, achieving whatever goals are most important to them. The most valuable thing you have when it comes to planning for your future is time. The, the sooner you start and the more detailed your plan is, the better chance of success you have. First timers are my favorite people to work with because they're hungry to learn. And coming to see me doesn't cost anything. I don't charge for appointments. I don't charge for anything. Come in, talk to me, and all you'll leave with is a little bit more knowledge than you came in with. Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Travis Winger, 435 Arapahoe Street, Thermopolis. All right, welcome back to uh, Lady Bobcat Basketball. You're here on 101.7 KDNO, and those of you streaming live on our YouTube channel on WOW Today, uh, appreciate you spending this afternoon with us on a Saturday as the Lady Cats and Bobcats have big, uh, big games for kind of down the season, I think, uh, against the Buffalo Bison. Um, both come in with uh, deceiving, well, the girls have a pretty good record. The boys have a deceiving record uh, as far as how good they, they uh, really can be and potential of where they can be uh, 
Lady Cats with a big win last night over um, over the top of the Glenrock Herders came out and played really well yesterday. Saw great ball movement and such. So, yeah, we have a uh, back-to-back home games for the Lady Cats as they get ready to play against the uh, Lady Bison of Buffalo. And Travis, I know, uh, you know, with this game we've been kind of talking about um, kind of since the season was getting ready to start, you know, of what it might look like and, and things like that. What do you have kind of on paper for some of these girls? I'll tell you what, uh, Buffalo for the girls team, they are probably going to, they have a good chance of being in the uh, state uh, state title game again right. they they're they only lost one uh player last year and so they're returning for their uh, starters and they were in that uh, championship game they on paper they're impressive they're averaging 64.3 points a game coming into this weekend they're averaging 18 assists as a team field goal percentage is 45 three point percentage is 37 uh, free throws 73 they're rebounding 36 a uh, game they're stealing 14 times a game and they're they've only got 19 turnovers so when you compare those numbers to ours the points a game we're at 38 they're at 64 they've got 18 assists we have seven and our field goal percentage uh, 29 to 45 on paper it looks like it's going to be uh, a hard fought battle for the cats to uh, stay in this one right uh, they've got uh, four girls that uh, average uh, double digits in the uh, scoring department and then they've got uh, three girls that are almost double digits in the uh, rebounding department so they've got some solid uh, players and uh, like I say returning a very experienced team. Yeah and I remember watching the championship game last year between them and uh, Douglas Bearcats and I mean they gave every you That's know right. they, it was probably the toughest one that the Bearcats had to earn um, in kind of their reign of winning championships I felt like they had to work really hard for it and actually Buffalo at one point I think uh, a lot of people in the st stands thought that they were going to come away with the win so um, definitely you know looking when you see the names of Tess Rule and Grace Peterson um, those two have been playing it seems like uh, they've been there a long time I know Tess is a, a, a senior this year I believe Grace is just a junior this year but uh, have been playing a number of years and like you said uh, and a number of them uh, when you're listening here you'll hear the the similar names because they are an experienced group and they are a, a well-oiled machine watching them play and everything so um, but on any given day you never know uh, when when things go one way or something does just doesn't start working out for them and I think the Lady Cats you know took a huge step yesterday and just what their capabilities are and watching how well they move the ball how well they took care of each other uh, even through mistakes and things like that and really persevered through got a big lead that kind of dwindled away and then they just came out and uh, ended ended up with a big win well no doubt about it Kevin I mean I think the uh, Bobcats on any given night if we're if we're hitting on all cylinders our defense is what it, we've seen it in a couple of the games and if the girls are hitting inside and outside I think we can play with anybody it's just a matter of you know we're gonna have to have all those things I think come into play tonight and order or this afternoon in order for uh, you know us to uh, stay in the game and make it a uh, a chance for the Bobcats to uh, have some success. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, one of those for sure. I mean, uh, last night uh, they had nine of their um, girls in the scoring column, and I think that's huge for Lady Cats because again, we've kind of talked about that even last weekend. It seems like if it gets limited to only one or two or maybe three players really putting up the production of scoring, uh, things don't seem to go near as well as when it's spread out. Even if it's a bucket here or a bucket there for someone else or some free throws to go down it just still takes the pressure off of some of those uh main scores you know of of being able to maybe get a little bit better open look and things like that so um hope hopefully they can keep that going so uh while we're there um you, you have some keys to the game written down here that we can go over uh these are presented by edward jones and your financial advisor here in thermopolis is travis winger and uh keys to the game today for the lady cats well, we got five of them today, Kevin. Number one is going to be taking care of the ball. Mm -hmm. We can't afford to have any turnovers on this team because they shoot the ball extremely well, so we don't want the ball to in their hands any more than we can help it. we got to have discipline on offense. We saw that last night. Much improved from last weekend. Run the plays, be patient, hit the open person rather than forcing some of the shots, right. which we saw that first weekend need to be taking high percentage shots sometimes we'll take a good shot when you know a little bit more time we might get a great shot and so i think if the the patient follows through there 
they need to definitely maintain the aggressive up-tempo defense. We saw that last night. It caused a lot of turnovers, and that led to uh, a huge lead in that first half. And if, I think we got We got to be able to see that. And then lastly, we talked about it before, and we've seen uh, much better evidence of that is playing as a team. Right. I mean, last night there was very unselfish play, more assists that we saw through the game, and uh, people were you know, playing as a team to win rather than uh, playing for themselves. And so I think those are the things that I think we need to see tonight to have success. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, you know this group has a has seemed to really come together in that aspect and uh, you know they're, they've had a few bumps here um, you know like you said this week I think you said that last night this few bumps but it seems like uh, you know Weinberger re re reined that in and had them you know kind of come together and uh, maybe condition conditioned it out of them <laughs> which is is not a bad thing either and uh, you know and so we're able to put some good things together and um, the Lady Cats will um, see how they follow up that that home win uh, last night as they get ready to play the Buffalo Bison again. Uh, this is uh, Kevin Gerber and Travis Bomagin on 101.7 KDNO. Uh, also streaming live on the Wild Today channel on YouTube. If you haven't and uh, you want to watch the games, uh, you can do that on YouTube. Go to the Wild Today, um, subscribe to it, but then also make sure you hit that bell for notifications. That way, anytime we start streaming, it'll notify you that we are getting ready to um, start a game. We usually will do that for a couple minutes just to make sure everybody can get on. And then uh, also you'll see uh, throughout, there'll be uh, some commercials and such for our sponsors. Also their uh, ads kind of pull up in the bottom corner as we're filming as well. And just want to thank all of those sponsors for all the help that they do uh, while we are able to travel around, not only do the home games, but also travel around with the Bobcats and give you uh, Bobcat basketball from wherever we might be playing in the state. And sometimes that might be uh, further than others. So uh, we kind of we kind of cover the whole state this year. So um, we are going to take another quick break here, uh, get a word from our sponsors, and we'll come back with the Sutherland starting lineup right after this. Okay, it looks At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. Looking for a clean, comfortable room in Thermopolis? Quality Inn of Thermopolis offers great rates with your choice of king, queen, or family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Reserve your room today. Call 307-864-5515. Amenities include free hot breakfast, pet-friendly, premium free Wi-Fi, indoor pool, truck parking, and more. Reserve your room today by calling 307-864-5515. Quality Inn of Thermopolis. Thermopolis. Stop in to Vicklund Pharmacy in Thermopolis to see what a hometown pharmacy really feels like. It's the only locally owned and operated pharmacy in town, and they are a compounding pharmacy to boot. They offer prescriptions, medical equipment, Medicare open enrollment, medication therapy management, and more. Vicklund Pharmacy can save you time and money. The service you deserve from the neighbors you trust. Vicklund Pharmacy conveniently located inside Max Market in Thermopolis. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Dad, this dad. We have the biggest and bestest selection in the area. And 172 point expectations. I still remember they're almost as smart as my dad. As for my Uncle Joey, he's the best. Pay up. Midway when you expect the best. Job, Kate.
for a place to relax, sip on your favorite specialty lattes or tea, and find the best gifts for any occasion. Storyteller is the place for you. Books brimming with compelling stories, gifts for the kids like Legos and coloring projects, and something for your family and friends like hats, jewelry, or a bag of award-winning Mountain Air Roasted Jackrabbit Java. To learn more, visit StorytellerYO.com or swing by at 524 Broadway in Thermopolis. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details only at Sutherland's. All right, and we're back here as they're uh, announcing the starters. Uh, we'll do the same. So for the start, uh, Sutherland starting lineups for tonight, um, it is number two, Carly Davis. Uh, number four, correct, Grace Peterson will be starting. Uh, number 14, Grace Finkel. Uh, number 23, Camry Davis. And number 24, Cassidy Bessler will be starting for the Lady Cats. We'll have a similar lineup as we did last night, or the same lineup as we did last night. We'll have uh, Dazlin Hunt, number two. We have Cameron Farrell, number five. We have JC Owsley, number 10. We have Hannah Hill, number 14. And Austin Slagle, number 30. Oh, it'll be Ina King, I apologize, tonight. Um, in place of uh, Austin Slagle, Ina King will get the start. So a uh, little bit of a different lineup here for Lady Cat. So um, that is your Sutherland starting lineup. And uh, just to prove that an old dog can learn a new trick, I'm going to get the Sutherland starting lineup <laughs> logo off of there. And uh, we'll get ready to go for the start of the game here for some Lady Bobcat basketball. So uh, again, Weinberger um, in uh his uh, into this young season, um, getting ready to coach his fifth game as head coach, been part of the program for a while, but uh, really kind of changing the culture and the uh, way this team has uh, been playing so far the start of this year. They've been playing really well, so to jump it up will be uh, Ina King who gets the jump over Peterson. And Cameron Farrell's gonna end up with it here in her hands as she dribbles up that right hand side. Gets it to JC Owsley, back to Cameron Farrell. Cameron gonna bring it now to the left-hand side. Ina King sets a screen high up there. Tough two, oh, like a three-two zone here. That they're gonna be playing kind of against. One that stretches. Right. It's very a very fluid yeah. uh, zone for sure, but one that they've played long enough that they they know where each other's gonna be at. Pass to Ina King here in the corner is Lady Cash just kind of trying to feel out what this defense is bringing, but. So far taking care of the ball, gets it into Ina King, entry pass. Dazzling Hunt now with it on the right-hand side, pass it to J.C. Owsley in the corner. J.C.'s gonna step back, take that three, shot is up, no good. Rebound by Peterson, gonna get the ball to Davis, and that is Carly Davis, gonna pass the ball to Bessler. Bessler gonna drive to the right-hand side. She's gonna stand with the hand up here. Good defense by Hannah Hill. And now Carly Davis again with it. Passes over to Peterson. A good defense there by Anna King. She knocks it away. Peterson able to hang on to it. He does get it to Finkel. Drive in. Looks like going to get a body. Blocking foul, yeah. yeah. On Ina, I think. Yeah, yeah. and it's inadvertent. She was just playing tough defense. Kind of got their feet tangled up, and that's going to be her first foul, team's first. Spice and take it out underneath. And that was also Davis. Camry. Peterson with the shot in the middle, up and no good, but rebounds and gets fouled. She'll be shooting two. And two shots there for her. Foul goes against J.C. Owsley. That'll be her first, team second. And Peterson will go to the line to shoot two. First shot is up. And off the front of the rim, no good. So it still shows a 0-0 minute 15 into this game. Each team only having a single possession, so both being pretty patient on the offensive side. The second one is up and good. So one of two there for Peterson gets the Bison on the board. Now they're going to have some pressure. 
Yeah. And then it looks like JC Alzi going to pick up our second foul here early. That does not help. No, that is not. A minute good. and a half into the game. And that will send number 24, Cassidy Bessler, to the line to shoot two as well. And again, just kind of kind of what we saw Glen Rock do last yeah. night was throw it into the corner right where they wanted him to, and then the pressure came, and Dazlin just a too high of a pass to JC. And uh, as the shot went up, she kind of walked into her. Second one is no good. They are going to call a violation, though, so she's going to have an opportunity to shoot another one as well. Looks like uh, JC stepped in a little too early. Hopefully she can get all this stuff out of her yeah. system here in the first two minutes of the <laughs> right. game and then uh, warm up. Right, nerves kind of taking over. So that second one for Cassidy will be good. And that will bring uh, Lady Bison three. And Dazzling going to get it in the corner there again, going to get knocked away. Again, they're going to have to work on someone come and help and make sure they keep it out of that corner and don't throw it to the corner. As but. we talked about last night with Glenrock, your goal is always to try to get it to the middle. But I'll tell right. you what, these Bison girls, they are tenacious. Uh, wherever the ball is, there's almost two people immediately. And so. I don't know in what language uh, Buffalo means really good at pressing, but <laughs> uh, they have always been really, really good at it. Uh, J.C. Owsley with it. She'll get it to the middle. Has some... Looks like she's going to get pushed from behind there from Carly Davis. Um, that will be their, her first foul and the team's first foul, but good, exactly what you want there. Uh, JC got it, took it right to the middle, had some pressure from behind, but kind of cut um, Carly off there as she had a push from behind. Hannah Hill now with the ball, looks to get it to JC Owsley. Anna King working hard on the block. Get, uh, doesn't get the ball, but still working that right-hand side. Ooh, a couple steps out to get to the three-point line. But. <laughs> And Ina King gets it. Ooh. Oh, turnaround jump shot gets knocked out of her hand. Shot is no good. And uh, Bison come away with it. And that'll be Bessler bringing it down. Good pass there to Pearson. Pearson unable to finish. Ooh. Ina King gets it. And then coming from out of nowhere, Carly Davis will knock it out of bounds. And that'll allow the Bison to set up their press she came once from again. 20 feet. She nice. saw that pass coming. She, <laughs> she did. Very, she almost got it. Very Del Dukes like. Yes, exactly. Oh. oh, tough pass there from Dazlin to Cameron. Going to get knocked. Oh, they're going to call a foul there on Carly Davis. So she's going to pick up two. Two, two early fouls as well. Well, this might kind of help us out a little bit, kind of even the uh, situation. Here comes Tess Rule. Right. And Tess, one that, uh, you know, have had the opportunity to watch her play for the last several years. And uh, so interesting that she comes off the bench, but it's probably a strategy here that the the coach wanted to try. J.C. Owsley with it, gets it to Dazlin Hunt. Good pass over to Cameron Farrell. Cameron Farrell at the three-point line to Ina, then left alone. Cameron Ooh. Farrell's shot up and no good, and rebound to Davis, Camry Davis. I'll have Camry and Carly. I'll do my best to keep them apart today. And gets it to Peterson at the top of the key. Tough pass into Tess Rule. And then there is uh, Carly with it, passes it over. There's Camry Davis, three-point shot, miss a shot. Ina King on the King rebound. Haven't said Finkel's name a lot just yet the, <laughs> uh, today, I but she, pause. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but man, she's she's another one that has played at a, since a very young age and it's come on. Ooh, ooh, double double dribble. dribble there by Ina King, but kind of again, uh, you know, Buffalo is uh, known for like just don't get it in the corners anywhere on the half court uh, or in the in the game because they'll swarm you. So Bison will bring it up, Tess Rule bringing it up as uh, Chloe Owsley and Austin Slagle check in for the first time for the Lady Cats. Pass in to Finkel, Finkel turns around, step up, shot is up, no good. Cameron Farrell comes down with it. Gonna have a two on two here. Good bounce pass oh. to Dazlin. Oh, almost shouldn't have oh. dribbled it, but they're gonna call a foul on uh, 24 there. That is Cassidy Bessler, that's gonna be her first, team's third, and that's gonna send Dazlin Hunt to the line. So an opportunity for the Cats to get on the board here. Well, I think you're right. If uh, Dazlin would have just caught the ball, jump stop, I think it would have been better suited. But she got the foul, right. so we'll see how she does from the line. First shot is up and off the back of the rim. Uh, right now, 4.48 left here in this first quarter. Uh, Bison three, Bobcat zero. So Bison also, I mean, Bobcat's defense doing a really good job of, you know, keeping them down to free throws only. Second one is up and is good. So 3-1, Bobcats finally get off. Sometimes just... Uh, Getting off that pesky zero, yeah. it just will kind of get an offense going. And Ooh, now Peterson with cut. it. Gets it there to 
Davis and Rule step out through for a three up and no good. Comes down to Peterson, back out to Davis. Davis's shot is up, no good. Rebound by Finkel, Finkel shot up and good. Number of offensive boards there. Lady Cats are just gonna have to work hard on the boards, try to keep it out of the hands of the Bison. Dazzin Hunt getting a hard trap there. Cameron Farrell's gonna get it across the line though. But again, double team Ooh. there. Gonna knock the ball away. Davis is gonna have it in her hands. She's gonna drive in. Good defense there by Dazzlin Hunt. Rule gets the offensive rebound, pulls it down. Ball's on the floor. Austin Slagle and Tess Rule end up wrapping it up along with Peterson and it's gonna be a jump ball that will stay with Lady Bison. Yeah, that number 24, that's Cassidy Bessler who is bringing the ball up. So you got 23 and 24 and a lot of these uh, Bison girls from behind have that long <laughs> ponytail. So Kevin's gonna have his work cut <laughs> off. Right. Uh, good shot there by Pearson, but it better defense by Hannah Hill as the shot is up and no good. Dazzlin Hunt comes down with it and uh, Cameron Farrell's gonna walk it up, let the Lady Cats get uh, set up on their offense here. As JC Owsley picking up those two early fouls, she's gonna sit on the bench. Chloe's gonna try to relieve that. Pass to Austin Slagle at the top. Bounce pass to Dazzlin Hunt. Dazzlin Hunt kicks out to Cameron Farrell. Three for Cameron, that's up and Nothing good. but net, Farrell from the, just up from the baseline, but nothing but net on that. Score is now Bison four, or five, Bobcats uh, four. And Tess Rule steps up for a three. Shot is up, no good, good rebound by Slagle. Mm. She gets tied up with Tess Rule again. And a jump ball, which will go to the Lady Cats this time. And coming in for the Buffalo Bison is Isabel Kirkhart. I'll probably call her Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> Just to keep don't, it a little easier. Twister. Yeah. Uh, Daz and Hunt said take it out, gets it into that corner again. Cameron with the ball over her head, falls to the ground, tries to pass it through. Uh, and Bessler is gonna get it. Shot is up, no good. Peterson gets a rebound, shot is up, no good. Tips it out to Bessler. Bessler now gets up, no good. Chloe Owsley working to try to get that rebound, unable to get it, and now Davis gets it. Passes it inside to Isabel. Isabel's shot is up and no good. So, I mean, Bobcats doing force and tough shots, just unfortunately letting them get a number of offensive boards, and uh, that's gonna hurt. Well, and this is one of those teams that you can't just kind of find them and uh, with the body. You're gonna have to find them, put your body on them, and move them because they are pushing hard to get to that basket. That's right, and the first shot by Isabel is up and good, so that gives them six, the Lady Cats four, and checking in for the Bison will be Aubrey Irish for the first time for Lady Bison. So again, uh, Bison also very deep bench here as they've already played uh, eight or nine people. So second one is up and good. good so quick pass back to the middle uh, with Farrell. And Cameron now back to Dazzlin Hunt. Dazzlin Hunt brings it up, passes back to Cameron. Cameron gonna get in that no man's land uh. again on the corner, but gets it out to Dazzlin Hunt. And again, just uh, two people around the ball almost all time. So they come out now in a man to man Test rule on Cameron. Austin Slagle there, oh, pass out job. to Dazzlin. Dazzlin's shot is up, no good. Austin Slagle gonna hustle after the ball, try to save it, and she does as she runs into the Buffalo bench, but stepped out of bounds right as she was saving it. Yeah, definitely a good hustle there, and the girls did a good job. They're starting to recognize, okay, if I've got two on me, somebody's open, Somebody, and the pass yeah. to that high post, Slagle was wide open. She should have actually turned around and looked at the Yeah, there, no one was really uh, challenging her there. Peterson now with the ball at the high post here, looks for a screen from Isabel. And she pull up jumper from the free throw line is up, no good, and Austin Slagel comes down with it. She's gonna pass it out to Dazzlin Hunt. Dazzlin's gonna have to save it. Uh. Tess Rule ends up with it, drives in on the left-hand side, layup is up and good for Scores. Tess Rule. Now uh, Buffalo nine, Bobcats are five or four. And, oh, good look, uh, the bounce pass from Hannah Hill just a little too late as Bessler's able to get it, steals it, gets it up to Isabel. Isabel jump stop, shot is up, no good. Gets her own rebound and up and good. So Isabel up off the bench, has four quick points. And now Chloe Owsley has it here in on the break. Does a good job of breaking it. Oh, and they're gonna call an offensive foul on Chloe Owsley. So the Owsley girls each with uh, two fouls, and that is gonna be the fifth. Um, but because it was a player control foul, there will not be free throws. But again, on the fifth uh, team foul, they do shoot free throws now per quarter, and then it clears at the beginning of each quarter. Tess Rule now with it, brings it up, gets it into Finkel's hands, passes over to Davis. Davis spin move, good defense by Austin Slagle. She knocks it away, gets that rebound, and then 
Gets it into the hands of Dazzlin. Dazzlin up to Cameron. Cameron's going to push it a little bit here. Steps to look at it. Chloe Owsley wide open on the right-hand side. Shot is up, and they're going to call a travel on her as she uh. kind of has that gathering hop in there, which I can say will be called this time, and then the next three times she shoots, it might not get called. It's a it's a tough one. Maybe it was just because she was so open they, they called that All little on her. <laughs> gathering uh, hop into the shot. Ball now uh, up at the top to Davis, left wide open. Shot is up and no good. Dazzlin Hunt again has a hand on the ball, but unable to bring it down. Finkel, another offensive board. Good box out there by Hannah Hill. Dazzlin Hunt comes down with it. Dazzlin Hunt, one of the smaller ones out on the court as far as uh, height-wise, but every rebound she's at least getting a hand on, just not able to get quite high enough to pull it down. And uh, now a full court press again here. Uh, Almost looks like a man-to-man. -man. Oh, good cut there by Chloe Owsley. Dazzle Hunt trying to get it in. And they're going to call a quick timeout um, as Weinberger didn't like what he was seeing there. So with that timeout, we're going to take a quick one as well. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. You work hard for those you love, putting in long hours because your family's hopes and dreams are worth saving for. That's why Bighorn Federal offers multiple ways to save. Our products can help you start saving for more immediate needs and future goals today. Talk to your local branch about an interest-bearing checking or savings account, education IRA, Roth IRA, CD, or health savings account from Bighorn Federal. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. All right, and we're back here uh, after the timeout here by the Lady Cats. Uh, just kind of Weinberger needing to get his girls to kind of gain their composure here with that pressure. Well, and one thing, Kevin, you talked about in the uh, break is, you know, they're getting multiple uh, shots, and they're not, uh, Buffalo's actually not making their first shot, and uh, but our girls have got to do a better job of getting a body on and keeping them out. They're they're crashing the boards, but they're not blocking out. Right. Uh, good def or good play here oh. is Bobcats break oh. the press. Hannah Hill unable to finish, and then Finkel gets it and clears it out to Davis, and that's the difference, right? Cats are getting a single shot. Buffalo's getting a number of shots at it, and that's the difference in this game right now. Ooh, a little hop step of her own right there by number 30, Aubrey Irish, and uh, going to get called on it as well. And uh, Caden Spoman comes in for the first time for Hannah Hill. It was a great man press break right there, too. Good entry two on pass. One, and good uh, pass uh, to uh, Hill, but just couldn't finish. Right. So they change it up a little bit. I'm going to have Chloe Owsley take the ball out instead of Dazzlin Hunt here. And uh, Cameron Farrell, again, not anticipating. Uh, I think they just forget how much she enjoys using her left hand. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, four team foul there. And that one goes against Camry Davis. That'll be her first, team's fourth. Uh, 33 seconds left in this opening quarter. Now uh, Dazzlin Hunt set take it out, gets it into Cameron Farrell. And she's going to set him up here. 11-4 is the score. Lady Cats trailing to the Lady Bison. Cut here by Cameron, or, or Cadence Bowman. Uh, and going to get fouled. So uh, she'll couple, go to the yeah. line. And uh, that will go against Finkel. That'll be her first. Team's fifth, so that'll send Cadence Bowman to the line, where she did has been scoring some of her yeah. points. Has been coming from the line. I think most of her points have at yeah. this point. Yeah. So uh, this will be a uh, uh, second trip to the line for Lady Cats. Uh, Dazzling going one of two. And uh, so now Cadence with an opportunity. First one is up and rattles around and is good. Good shot there by Cadence. Gives them five points on the game. And uh, Buffalo currently at 11. Uh, Lady Cats at five with 20.8 seconds left in the quarter. Second shot is up and good. Yeah, 100% there. Lots of free throws going in in this opening quarter between the two teams. Davis here with the ball on the side. Good defense there by Cameron Farrell. And Irish is going to get the ball. Jump pass in. And Austin Sagal is going to try to poke it away as they um, pass it into Isabel. Isabel is going to get to go to the line there as Austin gets called for Hurst first. And uh, Bobcats are in the bonus here on their fouls. So that will send Isabel to the line, who is currently 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Three and that is 3 of 3 now. Buffalo crowd didn't go wild exactly on that made free throw, so maybe it's an expectation. <laughs> I was going to say, she, uh, they've got two girls that are currently at 100% for the season, and uh, she's at uh, 83%. All right, and she is 100% on the day as she makes uh, both her third and fourth one there on that trip. And 
pass gets knocked away, gets into Davis's hands. Davis turns around and makes a bucket right as the buzzer goes off. So that will give us a score of Lady Bison 15, your Lady Cat 6 at the end of the first quarter. We're gonna get take a quick break uh, from a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back after this. Sponsor of this broadcast is Bailey Enterprises. For over 50 years, Bailey has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey. I'm Travis Winger. I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And we do, you know, I pride myself on helping people with financial planning, uh, achieving whatever goals are most important to them. The most valuable thing you have when it comes to planning for your future is time. The, the sooner you're, you start and the more detailed your plan is, the better chance of success you have. First timers are my favorite people to work with because they're hungry to learn and coming to see me doesn't cost anything. I don't charge for appointments, I don't charge for anything. Come in, talk to me, and all you'll leave with is a little bit more knowledge than you came in with. Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Travis Winger, 435 Arapahoe Street, Thermopolis. All right, and we're back with uh, second quarter action from Lady Bobcat Court here. Uh, as the Bison throw away their opening possession of the quarter, trying to force it in there to Carly Davis. Uh, Peterson did and went out of bounds. So now uh, Chloe Owsley set to take it out of bounds. Set to try to get it to, oh, a tough pass there as Bessler steals it, gets it in to Davis. Davis left hand shot is up and good. And that will be two points for uh, Carly oh, Davis. The girls are doing a good job. Uh, it's hunting across his half line in the center of the court. Well, and getting it out and in quick, you know, That's after a exactly made basket, don't did. give them time to set up into that press. Uh, Cameron tosses it up to Chloe up at the top. And Chloe's gonna get him set up. Oh, tough pass there to Dazzling, but she handles it. Now over to Cameron as well. Cameron's gonna dribble it up to the top again. Tough pressure there by Bessler. Bessler's gonna get a foul called on her as she's just kind of jumping and trying to take a swipe at the ball. That is gonna be the team's first foul in this quarter. That'll be her uh, second foul. 17-6 early in the second quarter. Dazzling Hunt, take it out of bounds, pass it over to Cameron. Cameron's gonna call the play here as they get set up. Chloe Owsey, good cut there, pass into Dazzle Hunt. Dazzle Hunt unable to handle the high pass there, and then gonna get a travel called there against Carly Davis as she tried to look ahead and pass it to her sister. And that will give the Lady Cats the basketball underneath their hoop. Chloe Owsey gonna take it out for the Lady Cats. Good cut there by Caden Smith, kind of at the end. Ooh. Cameron is gonna get a travel of her own as she just uh, took a real long second step there and drug that back foot. So as she's going to the ground, gonna get a travel She would take call. that jump stop and go straight up. Yeah, just have a good jump shot, yeah. Uh, Davis bringing it up for Lady Bison. Gets it into Finkel, Finkel back over to Carly. Carly gonna drive in, gonna get a blocking foul on the Lady Cats. That'll go against Dazlin Hunt. It'll be her first, team's first in this quarter. And then Camry Davis will take it out, passes oh, it right into pass. Bessler. Bessler not able to draw iron, just hard off the backboard. Think kind of maybe expected some contact from <laughs> Chloe from behind, and there wasn't any. And then well, and King was pretty close proximity right. too. And Ina King ends up uh, getting tangled up with uh, Davis on that, or Bessler, and. Uh, so a jump ball goes to Lady Cats and Bessler with another steal. Shot is up and good. She kind of came against the grain of the way everybody else was going, got the steal. Now Dazzlin Hunt will get it. She'll go drive in for a layup. Shot is up, no good. And Peterson comes down with the rebound, pass over to Bessler. Bessler now gonna bring it up. Long pass, up court to Finkel. Finkel kicks it back out to Camry. Camry Davis, shot is up, no good. Good box out there by Chloe Owsley. But Bessler's right there to add some pressure. Dazzlin Hunt ends up with it. Again, just relentless uh, no, full court just, pressure. I totally agree. And the thing is, that was a missed shot. So they're pressing full court press on missed shots as well as made shots. And right. yeah, that kind of tells you what kind of discipline they have. Absolutely. 
And now it's kind of in no man's land is Dazlin Hunt as she gets that double team in the corner there, but she's able to get it out and gets it to Cameron Farrell and Cameron will get them set up into the offense for Lady Cats over to Cadence Bowman. Cadence into the corner to Chloe Owsley. Chloe with the ball over her head. Dribble now up to the top of the key. Just not a lot of movement like we saw yesterday from the Lady Cats, kind of everyone standing around hoping that somebody makes a makes a play for for the Lady Cats. So Weinberger not liking what he's seeing as well, so he's going to call a timeout. So during this timeout, Lady Cats 6, Lady Bison 19. We'll be right back after this. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. Looking for a clean, comfortable room in Thermopolis? Quality Inn of Thermopolis offers great rates with your choice of king, queen, or family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Reserve your room today. Call 307-864-5515. Amenities include free hot breakfast, pet-friendly, premium free Wi-Fi, indoor pool, truck parking, and more. Reserve your room today by calling 307-864-5515. Quality Inn of Thermopolis. Thermopolis. All right, and we're back for Lady Bobcat basketball here after the timeout. 540 left here in this first half. Lady Cats 6, Lady Bison 19. JC Owsley checks back in. She had a couple of fouls, so kind of hanging on to, oh, and then a pass Cadence couldn't handle, and Davis will end up with it. Passes it forward to her sister, Camry. Tess Rule checks in as well. Spin move kicks out to Davis. Shot is up and no good. Hannah Hill will come down with it. And then looks like uh, Cadence Bowman is gonna need uh, to come out of the game. Looks like a possible injury there, so uh, Dazlin Hunt will check in. Ref was right on top of it and called it, called it right away. Hopefully she'll be all right. Dazlin Hunt with it here now, gets it to J.C. Owsley. J.C. Owsley to Dazlin Hunt up the sideline, get it across, and uh, Chloe Owsley now has it. And J.C. Owsley now in the corner. Wait for that second cutter. Wasn't quite there. Good screen there by Ina King. Roll. Chloe kind of to J.C. overloading one side, right. Kevin, which with a good team like this, I would think spacing would be your friend. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, because some of them, it just feels like they can guard, you know, multiple at, at once I mean, as it is. All five players on one side of right. the court. At this point, I'd be spreading them out as far as I could just to give you a little bit better opportunity to save the double team. Right. J.C. Owsley now with it, will get it up to her sister at the top of the key. Chloe now will drive with her left hand, gets it to Dazlin Hunt. Dazlin now kicks it over to Hannah Hill. Drives in with the left hand, kind of gets caught up in the air, and then uh, ball will get knocked away by Davis. Davis is bringing it up, fast pace. Tries to toss it in to Isabel, but uh, J.C. Owsley right there, able to bring the ball down, and then uh, it looks like we're going to get a blocking foul there by Carly Davis, or Camry Davis. That'll be her second. That's a team second. Well, unfortunately, we're halfway through the uh, quarter and we've not scored. Right. So we st we started the second quarter with six, and that's where we remain. Right. It's a four four to zero quarter right now uh, in favor of the Lady Bison, giving them that 13 point lead. Ina King, good oh, step good through move. move by Ina, and the shot is up, no good off the back of the rim. Tess Rule comes down with it, going to drive up the middle of the court. Chloe Alzi going to pick her up. Peterson now with the ball up over her head, getting a screen, screen and roll with Isabel. Good. Oh, nice pass. Oh, man, she's able to hang on to the ball somehow, and Isabel up and good for two. So Isabel with uh, eight points in this game, and that is going to be a jump ball as Chloe Alzi again kind of gets it to the sideline in no man's land here against this uh, pressure. Yeah, that's just something they're going to have to learn. You go up the side, it's going to be a rough trip where yeah. you get the ball to the middle and you, know, you just got more cushion. Yeah, especially against such a disciplined team in their defense in, in the Lady Bison who've been running this same press for, well, Ever. yeah, forever. <laughs> Isabel drives it in, gets it to Tess. Tess out to Bessler. Bessler tries to turn and kick it back out to Tess. 
Dazzlin Hunt gets the steal, gets it to JC. JC up to Cameron. Cameron, oh, dribbles off the heel of one of the Davis sisters, and Austin Slagle able to pick it up now with Hannah Hill with the ball. Hits that first cutter in Dazzlin Hunt, but unable to get much out of it, so she kicks it back out. Now Cameron Farrell with it, gonna set up on that right-hand side. Again, kind of a little, that triangle offense that we saw saw yesterday, but again, yeah, like you said, just, oh, good hard screen there by Austin Slagle. And shot is up oh. and good by Cameron Farrell. Wasn't the prettiest thing we've ever seen. She kind of got bumped at the end, shot it with her right hand off the right foot, but ball went in. That's right. And eight points, so Lady Cats on the board now. Oh. Shot is Davis, up yeah. and good there for uh, Camry Davis. And that was just a great give and go down low and uh, easy left-handed uh, layup. And that foul will go against Hannah Hill. It'll be her first, uh, team second. Davis at the line, first shot is up and good. It is good. I guess only shot yeah. since it was a and one pointer, yeah. 24-8 with just under three minutes left. Austin Slagle with it, pass Ooh, to Hannah nice Hill. Pass. Hannah Hill's shot up and good. Nice. So the girls good did a perfect break right job. There. Brought Got the ball to the middle, broke the press, pass ahead. Bounce pass across and made yeah. the shot. And I'm sure Weinberger's just like, why was it so easy that time? You know, like, what did we do? Because they got it to the middle, Kev. That's right. We've been That's talking right. about it. Test rule to Isabel, oh, and man. Isabel up and good. Man, Isabel, is, she's a beast underneath. Well, and uh, Rule just sees everything. Yes, yeah, she does, too. And Austin Slagle with it now. She'll get it here to the middle. Going to pass it to Dazzlin Hunt. Dazzlin Hunt kind of let everybody kind of clear out. Dribble over here to the right-hand side. Gets it to Hannah Hill. And we'll try to pass it off, pass off Isabel's foot, and it'll end up in the hands of Camry Davis. So she passes it up to Bessler. Bessler, left-handed layup up and is good. Scores now uh, Bison 28, uh, Bobcats 10 with two minutes left in the half. And J.C. Owsley now as she kind of just attacks that rim. Ooh. Shot is up and good. It's good play there by J.C. Owsley to get on the board for the first time in today's game. Well, Kevin, okay, I'll tell you what, the last three possessions for the Bobcats, they've done a much better job of breaking that press. And uh, I was looking around to see if they've had different players in, but uh, they really don't. So there is some substitutions coming in for Buffalo now, but the girls right. have just been a lot better about getting the ball to the middle and uh, moving it up court quicker. Yeah, and I, th I think I think what it came down to was it it just was a, is a mindset. You yeah. know, she they just finally kind of were like, you know what? If we don't break this press and do something different, it's going to be a long day. Well, and they're just going to have to, like you say, live with it. It's that exactly a mindset, I think, is a perfect way to say it. Absolutely. And uh, the free throw by Owsley was missed. Um, looks like uh, Davis Carley was able to come down with a rebound, tries to drive up um, the sideline, and then as she went up for the shot, gets fouled by uh, Cameron Farrell. Be Cameron's uh, first, and that is the team's third. Davis at the line, first shot is up and no good off the front of the rim. And these are her first free throws, so 0 for 1 and second one is good. Gets the Lady Bison 29, Lady Cats 12. And JC Owsley now will pass it up to Slagle. And now Slagle back to the middle. And that's almost been the difference, I that's think, is exactly getting it right. into Austin Slagle's hands. And then uh, Austin she's, is coming across yeah. the half court line, getting the ball and uh, giving him one more person right. to outlet. Dazzlin Hunt with a long two, unable to get the ball to go in, ends up in Davis's hands again. She's wow. going to drive in and a tough and one I shot don't there. I know how she got the ball up. But yeah, Davis cuts from the right side, kind of sidesteps around. I don't know if it was a Euro or not, but uh, how she got the ball up and makes a uh, layup. Right, and uh, Austin Slagle will pick that foul up. That'll be her second, team's fourth in the quarter. Score is currently Bison 31, uh, Lady Bobcats 12, 122 left in the half. Charlie Shot Davis uh, up and no good. Both, uh, oh man, almost a little quick step there by Cameron, but able to hang on to the ball. Gets up to Maggie Landon into the game for the first time. She's gonna be fouled there up the sideline by Camry Davis. Camry Davis picking up her third foul, team's fourth. Yeah, the coach sends rule to the uh, check-in table. She'll be coming in for Davis, right. hopefully before she picks up her next foul. Yeah, Lady Cats need to recognize that. Maybe <laughs> just Take attack, yeah. 
Maggie with a good cut there. Uh, Cameron okay. Farrell gets it. Oh, hey. get an offensive foul by Austin Slagle. She's going to pick up her third. That'll be the team's fifth. But again, because it's an offensive player control foul, it will uh, not bring free throws. 31-12 is a score. Just under a minute left here in this first half as uh, Camry Davis will bring it up. Carly Davis will bring it up. Gets it into Peterson. Peterson with a oh, good tough tip away pass. by uh, Maggie Landon. And then J.C. Alzey has it, but tries to toss it up to Maggie. Gets tapped away, and uh, Carly Davis with it now. She gets it into Finkel. Finkel, a good head fake there. Drives to the left. Good defense by Austin Slagle to slow her down. Has to get it back up to Peterson. Peterson step good through pass. passes test rule. And, oh, good defense by Chloe oh, Owsley. Yeah, I... Going to call her for her third foul. I think it might have been the angle because, yeah, I think that was all ball. But uh, he, where his angle, it was just all he could see his hands up and that. So, yeah, I agree. Owsley did a great job on Rule. And first one for Tess Rule is up and good. And uh, don't see too many more confident free throw shots than, than that right there. Yeah. Just catches it a couple dribbles and shots up. Yeah, she's 80% for the uh, season. And both of those are up and good. 30 3 12. 32 seconds left in the half. And Irish coming kind of from out of nowhere to knock the ball away from Hannah. Goes out of bounds. Lady Cats will maintain possession. I'd like to see Ina just take it one step towards the ball and then just run away from it. Like, oh, right oh, head up. <laughs> to look. Pass to JC. I was get stole away by Finkel. Finkel's going to have a wide open layup. Shot is up and good for Finkel. And Cameron Farrell's going to get it. 15 seconds. Oh, she's going to lose it to Tess Rule. Tess Rule going to drive up the left-hand side now. Under 15 seconds over to Finkel. Finkel fakes the shot, but nice. then nice goes up and shot. makes it. And now over to Hannah Hill. Two seconds left. Tries to pass it up. Finkel's going to get it. Passes to Tess Rule, and that is going to be halftime. Um, shows the Lady Bison 37, Lady Cats 12 here at the half. We're going to take a, a couple minute break here and we will be back for our uh, halftime show right after this. Uh, Lady Cats trailing. Thanks for listening on 101.7 KDNO and streaming live on Wild Today on YouTube. We'll be right back after this. Stop in to Vicklin Pharmacy in Thermopolis to see what a hometown pharmacy really feels like. It's the only locally owned and operated pharmacy in town and they are a compounding pharmacy to boot. They offer prescriptions, medical equipment, Medicare open enrollment, medication therapy management and more. Vicklin Pharmacy can save you time and money. The service you deserve from the neighbors you trust. Vicklin Pharmacy, conveniently located inside Max Market in Thermopolis. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit is. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. to relax, sip on your favorite specialty lattes or tea, and find the best gifts for any occasion. Storyteller is the place for you. Books brimming with compelling stories, gifts for the kids like Legos and coloring projects, and something for your family and friends like hats, jewelry, or a bag of award-winning Mountain Air Roasted Jackrabbit Java. To learn more, visit StorytellerYO.com or swing by at 524 Broadway in Thermopolis. All right, and welcome back as they're uh, doing some uh, halftime shootout here uh, for the Lady Bobcat basketball, trying to earn a soda from the free throw line. So um, 
we'll uh, get right into it and I'll go to the to our uh, stats halftime stats presented by Quality Inn and Suites and uh, we'll start with the Buffalo Bison they have uh, 37 points in this half uh, Carly Davis uh, really kind of turned it on in the second half ends up with five points uh, going one of three from the free throw line Tess Rule has four points going two of two from the free throw line Grace Peterson with a single point going one of two from the free throw line Grace Finkel with six um, Camry Davis with five going one of one from the free throw line. Cassidy Bessler has six points going two of two from the free throw line. And then uh, to lead all scores, um, Isabel Kirkhart uh, has 10 points going four of four from the free throw line. So really, I mean, uh, Lady Bison only missing uh, three free throws, uh, shooting a number of free throws there. And then uh, as far as the Lady Cats go, uh, Dazlin Hunt with one point, 50% uh, from the free throw line. Uh, Cameron Farrell with a three. Uh, in the first quarter and then another bucket for a total of five points. J.C. Owsley uh, with a bucket of her own for two points going 0 for 1 from the free throw line. Hannah Hill with that uh, good press break uh, layup to score two. And then uh, Cadence Bowman before going out with what looked like an injury um, going two of two from the free throw line. And um, so with that, that are your uh, quality in uh, halftime stats. And uh, we are very lucky in this town to have a, a great staff that just can help out uh, wherever when it comes to our, our uh, doctors and everything. And uh, Travis, um, because of that, he kind of wears a number of different hats. And so he's going to go and help check out one of our lady cats to make sure she's okay. Um, as we continue this halftime, but, uh, you know, um, like we looked at when we were looking at our keys to the game, you know, taking care of the ball. I mean, unfortunately, uh, that press has really hurt the Lady Cats. They've had a number of turnovers, uh, getting it into the corner each time and getting trapped, unable to really take care of the ball there. Uh, the other one was, you know, discipline on offense, run the play well. And, and I think Travis is really right on this, um, too, and you really start seeing uh, kind of that extra pressure that Buffalo was giving there, kind of pushing everybody onto one side, and then all of a sudden all ten girls are all on one side. And when you have that extra pressure, it sure is nice to spread it out a little bit more. Um, the other was just taking high percentage shots. I do, I do believe they've been able to do that. Just haven't been able to get a lot of shots off. So the, the percentage of shots are are there. Um, not really being able to knock them down just yet, um, and definitely haven't had enough looks at it to uh, get back into this game just yet. And then, uh, you know, a, a pr aggressive up-tempo defense. And I'd really say, I mean, uh, first quarter, it was a 15-6 game, but really a lot of those points came late into the first quarter. And I think the ladies' defense was doing really, really good. And then um, kind of holding them to just some free throws. And then a few late buckets there did get them up to 15. Now the second quarter was a little bit different there. I think uh, Lady Cats getting wore down a little bit more. Bison do have a uh, deep bench, and they're able to bring um, some girls off the off the bench. Isabel being one of those, uh, being their lead scorer, and she has 10 points coming in off the bench. Um, so I think that's that's one of those. And then the last one was just playing as a team. And I, you know, I think um, what we saw work so well last uh, last night uh, for the Glenrock Herders where they were moving the ball quick and everything. They're just a little more hesitant on getting rid of the ball and passing it around. And so uh, just kind of seeing a difference there. And then um, I think, uh, you know, really they, they did make a little uh, change there during a the timeout. Coach Weinberger did and said, hey, let's get the ball into Austin Slagle's hands on the press breaker. And then we can, um, she's really, she has been really patient, kind of kept it off the sideline, get it back to the middle, and then they've been able to break it. So, um, you know, some good things there. Again, just kind of really going to have to stick to those keys of the game as well. I mean, it's a 37-12 game, 25-point deficit for the Lady Cats. Really going to need to chip away at this. Um, again, not going to be able to get it in one possession. It's going to take the rest of the game to get back into this and really going to have to cause some turnovers gonna have to keep it to one and done for the Lady Bison not allow them to get several shots at it which is what really got them their lead uh, especially in the first quarter as they uh, got uh, multiple offensive rebounds so with that we are going to uh, take a quick break here get a word from our sponsors and we'll be right back this is 101.7 KDNO Bobcat basketball we'll be right back
The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details only at Sutherland's. You work hard for those you love, putting in long hours because your family's hopes and dreams are worth saving for. That's why Bighorn Federal offers multiple ways to save. Our products can help you start saving for more immediate needs and future goals today. Talk to your local branch about an interest-bearing checking or savings account, education IRA, Roth IRA, CD, or health savings account from Bighorn Federal. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. A proud sponsor of this broadcast is Bailey Enterprises. For over 50 years, Bailey has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey. I'm Travis Winger. I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And we do, you know, I pride myself on helping people with financial planning, uh, achieving whatever goals are most important to them. The most valuable thing you have when it comes to planning for your future is time. The, the sooner you're, you start and the more detailed your plan is, the better chance of success you have. First timers are my favorite people to work with because they're hungry to learn and coming to see me doesn't cost anything. I don't charge for appointments, I don't charge for anything. Come in, talk to me, and all you'll leave with is a little bit more knowledge than you came in with. Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Travis Winger, 435 Arapahoe Street, Thermopolis. All right, and that will uh, wrap up our halftime show here for uh, Lady Bobcats as they get ready to get started here for the third quarter. and. Um, Travis is going to make it up just in time to uh, start filming here as the start of the second half goes as well. So I thought he was going to uh, have me doing both. And those of you that uh, watched me try to do that uh, last year uh, saw that it didn't go so well. So, uh, again, uh, Travis, just want to, you know, give a thank you to you, too, for all the hats you do wear um, in this and, and being able to check out our players and everything, too. That's an invaluable thing that a lot of communities don't get to have. So appreciate you and everything you do there too so uh first possession for lady cats um shot was up and no good by hannah hill and uh lady bison now with it and um finkel now with it passes it to davis as she cuts through the lane gets back out to davis sister shot is up no good and now Dazzle Hunt comes down with it. So a lot of bodies hitting the ground that time, which were fouls, it seemed like, in the first quarter. Ooh, J.C. Owsley, yeah, going to get a – anytime you tuck the ball and just dip a shoulder, you're going to get a foul called on that, and that's going to be J.C.'s third foul, first of this quarter. So when you were uh, doing stats at the halftime, Kevin, one of the things I thought that was interesting is that Illabezel Isabel Kirkhart, her average is 3.7 points a game, and I think she was the one that uh, – at the uh, you know the high their leading score for the uh, the half right correct? right yeah with ten points going so four she's or four so tripled her uh, right. average uh, game score so she's having a good game tonight. yeah and right on cue almost looked like she was going to go for another <laughs> shot had the ball kicks it over to Davis in the corner Davis out to Bessler Bessler long two shot is up no good good rebound there by J C Owsley and she's going to come out but again just pressure all the time uh, Bison are just running and they're just all ball hawks so Finkel just kind of Pokes it away, knocks it out of bounds, keeps uh, possession to the Lady Cats. Um, I mean, you can just expect if you have the ball, there's going to be two people on you almost right. all the time. Oh, right. Why did she pick up the dribble? Yeah, the death dribble, the Pass single, single to, dribble. Uh, and, yikes. Oh, oh that okay, works. She got yeah. tipped, yeah. Finkel helped out there a little bit as she knocked it away from J.C. Owsley. J.C. now be able to bring it up the right-hand side, gets it to Cameron. Cameron will keep it on the right-hand side. Good hard cut there by Dazzin. Wide open, oh, nice Hannah Hill. pass. Shot is oh. up and good by Hannah. A, about a 10-foot jumper just off the uh, down from the, uh, the corner she's of the key. Had, she's had two good looks here yeah. uh, early in the in the half, uh, going one or two with those. So kind of being that second cutter right now. 
which we've it, talked about before. Absolutely. Isabel has it here. She's going to turn around. Shot uh, is up, and Ina King's going to foul her. She did great job with defense, and then right as she went to shot, she kind of pushed her body into right. her. I think it was more of a body shot because she did everything else was good and straight up, but just a little bit too aggressive. Right. But. And I think that's a that's a misconception of being straight up and down is, right. is a lot of times they think they can stay straight up and down and still walk into the player right. and uh, they're going to get called for that. So Isabel uh, misses her first uh, free throw of the night. Uh, she misses the front end of that one and then makes the second, uh, giving the Lady Bison 38 to Lady Cats 14, 6, uh, 10 left here in this third quarter. And the uh, Bison are set up now more in a man-to-man, -man, which is definitely not quite as suffocating. Right. As oh. your uh, Cameron Farrell deep three is nice. good. Cameron from the top of the key, about a foot and a half back and nothing but net on that. Scores uh, 38 to 17, Bison remain in the lead. And that was one of the examples of where the uh, Bison over aggressive defense didn't pay off because right. they were two around Dazzling Dazzling found Cameron. Drive in there by uh, Bessler yep. and shot is up and no good, but it did get fouled, so she'll go to the line. Who I didn't see who the foul was on. That was on Ina. Oh yeah, Ina Ina. King. So, so that'll second. be her third oh, really? for the night. Yeah, she one. picked one up early in the first quarter. Bessler goes up for the first, is up and good. Well, they do not spend much time at the free throw line. One because they spend so much time at the free throw <laughs> line, I think is why. <laughs> they don't want to extend the game, because like, right. okay, quick. <laughs> and second one is up and good. But boy, I'll tell you what, their shooting percentage from the line is impressive. It is, and uh, they're a good free throw shooting team, and they do a lot to make sure they get there a lot as well. Dazzlin Hunt with it now. Pass to J.C. Owsley up at the top of the key. Good cut there by Dazzlin. Screen there to J.C. J.C. posted up looking for a pass from Cameron. Cameron going to drive the right-hand side, kicks it back out to J.C. J.C. Three up oh. and good by J.C. Owsley. Good, good shot there. Give it go there. And then pass back from Cameron. Yeah, it was a good kind of a two-man game there, yeah, and it, it worked out really well. It was a good play. They've played a lot of basketball together, so they do know where each other are a lot on the court. Bessler with it here in the corner. Hannah Hill on her. Good defense there by Cameron. I'm not sure if... Oh, he did call a foul yeah, there on Cameron. Cameron will pick up her second. That's going to be the team's fourth here with yeah, that's only three minutes gone. And with them being such a be good <laughs> free throw shooting team, <laughs> That does good. not bode well. Yeah, they're going to have to be careful. Right. Austin comes in for Ina. And Peterson and Rule check in for the Lady Bison. Pass over to Davis. Davis to Bessler. Bessler over to Rule. And Isabel working hard inside. Turnaround Ooh. jump shot. Oh, oh man. Uh, tough. Tough call there as J.C. Owsley is going to pick up her fourth. Mm, we did not need that. No. And the only thing, I mean, it definitely was a clean block, but they're they're saying her hand was on her or on her hip or something, she which wasn't, she I didn't. Yeah, I didn't feel like, like it was she there. She was like three feet away from her. Right. And that's going to send Isabel to the line to shoot two. First one is up and no good. Well, for being 83%, uh, the last two times shooting, she's not uh, living up to the bill. Right. Definitely did the first uh, half. Absolutely. Went four of four in the first half is one of three currently. Second one here is up and off the back of the rim. Good rebound there by Austin Sagel. Good. Nice job. Yeah, good job at just being strong with it. Gets it to Chloe Owsley, who came in for her sister as JC picked up her fourth foul. Uh, Lady Cats have five team fouls. As Lady Bison do not have not fouled yet. Ooh, good nice move pass. there, Cameron Farrell. Oh, up and good. Nice so Cameron Farrell. Bessler fouls her uh, as uh, Cam gets the uh, pass, uh, cutting through the uh, key for a left-handed layup. And Bessler will pick up her third. That is the team's first. And yeah, the great pass there by Hannah Hill as she finds the cutter. Cameron's free throw for the and one is up, rattles Ooh, around and good. Nice job. Scores now uh, Bison 40, Bobcats 23. Best quarter scoring for the Cats. Right, uh, Cameron having six points in this quarter. Ooh, nice pass. Good pass inside there and Peterson's gonna go up and score. Good move there, she's able to just, she could feel where uh, Austin Slagle was and just spun away the opposite direction, finished with the left hand. Nice Cameron point. Farrell here. And she's going to try to get it to G Chloe Alzi, and uh, Weinberg is going to have to take a quick timeout. 
Uh, 4-11 left here in this uh, third quarter. 23 for the Lady Cats, 42 for Lady Bison. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. All right, and we're back after the timeout. Lady Cat's doing a good job in this quarter, outscoring the Lady Bison 11-6 um, to six in this quarter. And Almost looks doubled like, their score. Right. They're going to come out in that, and that's just in half a quarter. That's so, right. Doing a good job. Dazzling Hunt now doing exactly what you're talking about in the break, just clearing out, letting Dazzling just bring it up one-on-one. -on -one. Dazzling pass it out to Chloe Owsley. Chloe going to pass it over to Hannah. Hannah going to pass it quick over to Cameron. Ball movement. And Cameron sends, oh, yes. drives left hand, shot is up, good. Oh, it looked like she maybe got hit on the arm, but shot is no good. Rebound comes down to Bessler, and they're going to call the jump ball, which will go to the Bison. Cameron's been limping most of the game. I haven't been able to tell if it's her ankle or her knee. All right, Bessler with the ball here, gets it to Tess. Tess to the middle to Davis. Oh, good ball move. Davis going to pass to Peterson. Everybody touched the ball on that press breaker, and Isabel gets to... Reap the rewards with the bucket, scoring an easy layup. 44-23, Lady Bison with three and a half left in the third quarter. Cameron Farrell, oh, trip there, an inadvertent foot. <laughs> oh, goodness. And mm. passes it in, oh, tosses job. it out to Hannah Austin. Hill from Austin, yeah. And, uh, ooh, a little handoff. Uh, somebody wasn't ready. Yeah, miscommunication between Dazzlin and Austin on that one. Oh, wow. good pass there, wow. man, from Davis, Davis to Bessler. To Bessler and yeah. Bessler finishes with an easy layup there. 46-23 with three minutes left. Cameron Farrell going to bring it up the right-hand side. Lady Cat's going to need to find uh, someone looking at the hoop ready to score as well. Dazzle mm -hmm. Hunt gets it over to Hannah Hill. Hannah Hill with the ball over her head, pass it back up to Dazzlin. Dazzlin now with... Cameron on the right-hand side, a lot of standing and watching. Need to get some movement from the Lady Cats. Cameron will get it, drive over to left, pass over to Chloe. Chloe now drives up to the top again, pass over to Dazzlin. Dazzlin, good jab step there, drives on the right-hand side, goes up for a layup off the side of the backboard, but is going to get fouled in the process. Dazzlin gonna go to the line to shoot two. 26 to 43, and we've got 228 left in the third quarter. Dazzlin Hunt on the line. And that will be Bessler's uh, fourth uh, foul and team second. First one is up and good for Dazzlin. So Cameron and Austin will come out for Lady Cats as Ina and uh, Landon come in. Second one for Dazzlin. Is up and oh, and she felt it. She was going to miss and, <laughs> and rushed in to go get her own rebound. So, uh, lane violation for her. So, 50% from the free throw line for Dazzlin Hunt on the on the evening, going two of four for her two points. Tess Rule bringing it up for Lady Bison's good hard screen Ooh, and roll there by Peterson there. and good defense there by Chloe Owsley and Peterson trying to save the ball steps out of bounds. Good defense there by the freshman as she uh, was playing against Peterson. Chloe set to take the ball out of bounds, and Dazzlin Hunt will come with it. Yeah, they play that man-to-man, -man, and then it's kind of like whoever's closest comes over to do the double. Uh. Oh, good patience by Chloe to wait for it to clear out, but a little tough pass trying to get it into Dazzlin. Ball goes out of bounds. Test rule now with the ball. These uh, possessions are so important in a game like this when you're down, you know, uh, double digits, mm. and. Davis with the shot, nice and that's Carly up and good for three. Takes the lead, 49-24, Lady Bison. Pass over to Chloe. Chloe up the middle. No one around her. Oh, keep driving until they stop yeah, you. <laughs> Dang it. She had a uh, lane down the middle. Yep, she would have she taken did. it. And uh, Chloe Alzi has it. She's going to hand off to Dazzlin Hunt. Dazzlin going to dribble to the middle. 
And Maggie Landon now is going to get it poked away by Peterson. Peterson going to bring the ball, pass up ahead to Davis. Wow. Davis with a left-hand shot up, no good. And Maggie Landon comes down with it. Going to get a foul called on the Lady Bison. Tell you what, the uh, Lady Bison ball movement on that break is so good. They very rarely, the ball hit the floor. They just pass, 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 and it's most of the time a layup. Right, and uh, Camry Davis picks up her fourth foul, so a number of the Lady Bison in foul trouble now, but again, because of the deep bench, you don't feel a lot of fall off there. Cameron Farrell back in for the Lady Cats. She's gonna drive it up against Davis here. Ball gets poked away, but ends up in Maggie Landon's hand. Maggie gonna drive oh. and gonna drag her feet, so gonna get a travel called on her as well. Couple turnovers there by Landon, last couple possessions. Gets into Tess Rule. Uh, just over a minute left in this third quarter, 49-24. Lady Bison over the top of Lady Cats. Finkel with it, passes into Peterson. High-low action there, shot is up, no good. Good defense there by Hannah Hill. Ina King comes down with it, gets it to Cameron. Cameron gonna drive up the left-hand side, give it in to Hannah. Hannah gonna hand off to Chloe Owsley. Chloe over to Maggie. Maggie Landon gets it into Ina King at the high post. Ina turns and fires one over to Hannah Hill. Back into Ina. Ina step through move, kicks it out to Cameron. Cameron for a three. Three is up oh, and good. Wow, by she was about three feet behind the line to that time. Step forward and nothing but net. Knocking, from Cameron yeah, Farrell. knocking down her third three for the evening and uh, having a nine point quarter here. Doing a good job. Oh, good step through move there by Carly Davis for two. 51 27 with. Uh, Looks like maybe the final possession here of this quarter. 15 seconds left for Lady Cats. Cameron Farrell bringing it up the right-hand side. And gets it over to Maggie Landon. Under 10 seconds. Hopefully somebody knows there's not much time left. Over to Maggie. Maggie oh, going to look for shot. the deep three. Shot is up. No good. Ina King comes back down Eight. with it. Oh, gets it to Cameron, no but too late. And so uh, as bodies hit the floor, uh, that is the buzzer. So Lady Cats 27, Lady Bison 51 here at the end of three. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back for the fourth and final quarter of Lady Bobcat basketball. Looking for a clean, comfortable room in Thermopolis? Quality Inn of Thermopolis offers great rates with your choice of king, queen, or family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Reserve your room today. Call 307-864-5515. Amenities include free hot breakfast, pet-friendly, premium free Wi-Fi, indoor pool, truck parking, and more. Reserve your room today by calling 307-864-5515. Quality Inn of Thermopolis. Stop in to Vicklund Pharmacy in Thermopolis to see what a hometown pharmacy really feels like. It's the only locally owned and operated pharmacy in town, and they are a compounding pharmacy to boot. They offer prescriptions, medical equipment, Medicare open enrollment, medication therapy management, and more. Vicklund Pharmacy can save you time and money. The service you deserve from the neighbors you trust. Vicklund Pharmacy, conveniently located inside Max Market in Thermopolis. All right, and we're back here for Lady Bobcat basketball, uh, getting ready to start the fourth and final quarter of this game. Looks like Gabby Hall for Lady Bison will check in for the first time for, for Buffalo. And girls gonna get the ball, kind of <laughs> taking their time to get over there. And so uh, ref finally just said, all right, let's go. Set the ball down, but uh, get it in, no, nothing to do with that. Cameron Farrell now with the ball, setting a number of different screens. So run a little bit of a different offensive set. Oh, just been patient. Oh, wide open. And JC Owsley not able to make the shot. And rebound comes down to Tess Rule. She's going to push the action here. Dazzle Hunt comes from behind, almost gets a steal. Stays with Tess. And oh. then Irish, unable to handle the pass, kind of was getting ready to make a move before she caught it. And uh, ball goes out of bounds. The other thing uh, Buffalo doesn't do is uh, ever take their press off. So yeah. most of the time you'll see that all four quarters for the entire game, no matter what a lead may or may not be. The JC Owsley with it gets it to Cameron. Cameron passes it back into JC. JC passes it over to Hannah Hill. Hannah over to Austin. And back and forth, here we go. Dazzle Hunt over to JC Owsley. JC has an opportunity to drive to the right. Jump shot up, no good off the glass. Austin Slagle comes to get it. Looks like Gabby Hall's gonna come and push Austin. And that will go on Gabby Hall. Good box out there by uh, Austin Slagle. Cameron Farrell with the ball underneath their own hoop. And then pass over to Cameron. Cameron will 
drive with the left. J.C. Owsley up. Oh, almost I thought she was going to do a little <laughs> sidestep three there. Yeah, that's what I thought was happening. And that takes a lot of strength to get that shot up. And Dazlin Hunt with it. Pass over to Hannah Hill. Good cut oh, there by nice. Cameron. Cameron's shot is up and no good, but she will be able to go to the line as she is fouled. You know, Kevin, we've talked about it before. Sometimes these girls get in a situation where it's like ah, just a jump stop would give them a better opportunity to be able to do stuff. It seems like they kind of move, and then they're pausing with that second step, and it's right. like ah, that jump stop would help them. It really would because then they'd have a little more strength to go up as uh, Cameron misses that first of two free throws. But, yeah, you're right, just uh, – to have a little more strength and uh, well, the a, options a, with the break. Yeah, absolutely. Second one is up and good for Cameron, who had a really good third quarter, scoring nine points in that quarter, going one to two here early in the fourth quarter. 51 28 is the score now. Lady Bison over. Uh, Irish gets a good pass there from Peterson. Shot is up and good for Irish. 53 28 now. And going to get a second foul here on uh, Tess Rule as she picks up two quick ones. Second team foul as well. Third team foul, I apologize, there against Buffalo. 53 28, six and a half minutes left. Dazlin Hunt taking the ball out. Pass, high pass, good, good pass. rebound, or good catch there. Oh, oh. my goodness. And then Davidine. Uh, Keen coming in for the first time. Great hands as a, she had a tough pass over the top from J.C. Owsley. Goes up for the shot, gets fouled, and now goes to the line. Bobcats still trailing by a decent margin with Bison at 53. Bobcats 28, uh, 625 in the fourth. First shot was up. Was that good, Kevin? It was not. No, it, it rattled off the back of the rim. Looked like a good shot, just didn't drop. Davidine's second one is up and good for Lady Cats. So the young freshman able to get in the scorebook here. Irish bringing it up for Lady Buffalo. Over to Peterson. Peterson gets it into the hands of Hampshire. And now Peterson has it. Gets it to Rule. And strolls up the left-hand side. Gets it into Peterson. Good step through. Little baby hook shot there by Peterson. And shot is good. And Cameron Farrell will bring it up for Lady Cats up this right-hand side. Handoff to J.C. Owsley. J.C. gets a screen and roll from Austin. Austin, good hands there. Do wish, oh, and they're going to say that is off of Lady Cats, but thought that hit Tess um, before it went out of bounds. But Now uh, Irish will bring it up, so... Um, Lady Bison able to uh, bring some other players in off the bench with the lead here. Dazzlin Hunt now gets it as it gets knocked away by Lady Cats. Dazzlin bringing it up. Left hand here gets it to J.C. Owsley. J.C. Owsley left open. Shot is up and good nice for J.C. Owsley. Nice right side of the uh, floor, her favorite. Open three and she takes it and drains. 55-32 and uh, really the second half, the Lady Cats really have been winning this half now as Irish drives in and scores her second bucket for the game. And uh, Lady Cats doing a good job now moving the ball around and uh, um, everything outscoring uh, Lady Bison 15-14 in that third quarter. J.C. Owsley left open again. Shot is up, no good. Oh, Austin good Slango gets Austin. it and Davidine, Davidine ends up with it. Shot is up, no good. Dazlin knocks the ball away out of Irish's hands. Jump ball and that will go to the Lady Bison. Three offensive boards for the Cats that time, Kevin. They're getting a little more aggressive. Yeah, they're getting end. in there and, and really going after the ball. Uh, Chloe Owsley will check in for Austin Slagle. 57-32, under five minutes left here in this contest. Irish with the ball as the Lady Cats show some full court pressure here man to man. Gets it into Gabby Hall. And pass into Finkel. Finkel, little step through. And you know you have some good box outs when the ball's <laughs> able to hit the ground before that's anybody right, goes and grabs right. it. Uh, pass from Dazlin to JC. Chloe Owsley with a three pointer of her own. Shot is up, no good. Finkel comes down with the rebound, and uh, Carly Davis comes up the middle of the court. Left hand, she's going to try to go coast to coast, but uh, Cameron Farrell says no ma'am and knocks it out of bounds. Hannah Hill will come in for Cameron. 
Pinnacle Bank scoreboard, 57-32, 418 left as the Bison are ready to inbound the ball on the baseline. Gabby Hall has it here on the near side, passes over to Irish. Irish now to Davis, left open from the three-point line. Shot is up, no good, good rebound by J.C. Owsley. She brings it up the right-hand side. She's gonna push, no push it here a little bit. Wolves coming. Good step over pass there to Hannah. Hannah to Chloe, Chloe to Dazzlin. Dazzlin shot up, no good, good rebound there by Davidine again, shot up, no good. And ball ends up in Irish's hands. But again, Davidine not in too much uh, minute-wise just yet with a number of offensive boards. Dazzlin Hunt just gets a steal as Irish tries to pass it up the sideline. And Chloe Owsley has it here, pass to the corner uh, to Hannah. And Hannah kind of hanging on to it. No movement from the Lady Cats. Over to J.C. Owsley. J.C. at the top of the key. Kind of set everybody up here. Going to hand off to Dazzlin Hunt. Fortunately, Travis, it feels like uh, this is a play that you would run when you have the lead. Yeah, it's Just kind of like a stall. And oh. J.C. Owsley gets an and-one opportunity. He comes to a jump stop, fakes a spin move, spins back, and uh, bank shot from the right-hand side. She'll uh, score and go to the line for an uh, old-fashioned three-point opportunity. Right. And Carly Davis picks up her third foul. That's uh, the team fifth foul for Buffalo. So Lady Cats kid get to the line a number of times here the last uh, several minutes of the quarter if they try. J.C. Owsley now ooh, unable to draw iron on that free throw. And uh, so because of that violation, so Lady Bison will take the ball out as Isabel comes in for Finkel. And then a number of other Bison try to get in, but not quite just yet. So Davis will bring it up for Lady Bison. And Carly, she's really good, good with the ball. She's yeah, able to kind of just is. dribble through the pressure. Gabby Hall has it here, pass it back over to Davis. Davis now will pass it to Irish. Irish will drive in, go up for the layup. Shot is up, no good. Looks like you need a foul on, I think, Chloe Owsley. And that will go against Chloe Owsley. She'll pick up her fourth. That'll be the team's first in this quarter. And that'll send Irish to the line, who has four points in the game. Ironically, the... Uh Bison have five fouls this quarter, and we us won. And right. the last quarter was totally the flip. <laughs> yeah, it was. And makes the first one. 58-34, Lady Cats trail Lady Bison in this one with just under three minutes left here in this contest. And Aubrey Irish uh, taking a little bit more time at the free throw line. Shot is up and good, so goes 2-2, two two, scoring all six of her points here in this fourth quarter. Cameron Farrell going to bring it up the right-hand side. And gets it into Dazzlin Hunt over to Hannah Hill. And Irish pokes it away and goes to save the ball, or save it. And uh, good yeah. play there by uh, Lexi Garrison as she saves the babies over there as the diving, uh, <laughs> <laughs> diving Irish came in. Uh, Cameron Farrell with it up at the top of the key. And gets it over to Dazzlin Hunt, back over to Hannah Hill. Looking for that cutter. Oh, good, oh, good, move. good move. Almost she could have yeah. just taken it herself. <laughs> yep, she sure should have. And uh, steal there by Bessler. Bessler tries to pass it up to Davis. Gets it to a Bessler back with it. Gets it into Isabel. Good defense there by Ooh. King and Hill. And then uh, shot is up and no good by Irish. And uh, Chloe Owsley is going to come down with it. 220 left. So here, you know, at this time of the game for Lady Cats, it's now time to just kind of see what you can work through with your offense. You know, you have some of your younger girls on the court, see what you can get going and uh, try to avoid those types of plays. Uh, looks like they're gonna get a foul. It's gonna be called on, that's gonna be called on Chloe and that's gonna be her fifth, I believe. Team second. And Ina King's gonna come in for Chloe or for Davidine. Looks like JC will come in. So sisters for sisters on this one. 2.06 left, scores uh, Bison 59, Lady Bobcats 34. And uh, Davis will bring it up, pass it over to Bessler, and pass it over to Hine in for the first time for Lady Bison. Gets it into Camry Davis. Camry oh, with nice a lean move. through wow. shot, and it's good. Going to get a foul on Cameron. Yeah, just kind of a body situation where uh, Davis was leaving, leaning around and Cameron just kind of bumped her with the body and as she's falling down, throws it up, bank shot. 
She going to the line herself for the old fashioned three. Oh, wow, that was a tough shot too. That's third foul on Cameron and team's third. Shot is up and good for Camry Davis. Eight points for Davis in the game here. Cameron Farrell gonna bring it up. Dazzlin has it. Oh, fake nice handoff move. there, drives oh. in, and she's gonna get fouled by Isabel. Isabel, or Dazzlin drives in. It was a great fake, because they've handed it off every single time, <laughs> and uh, just kind of left wide open. Isabel tried to come in and uh, swat it away, but she's gonna pick up her second foul. So Dazzlin Hunt, uh, only free throws in the book so far in the game, going two of four. Makes the first, so three of five. Gives the Lady Bobcats 35 points uh, to the Lady Bison at 62. Got some substitutions, first time in the game. We've got uh, Charlie Slagle and uh, Kinsey. Frederick in there, yeah. yeah. Charlie Slagle, I love how she is very confident in her shot. She uh, loves to shoot the three ball. Second one is up, no good. Ooh, Ina King comes down with it, pass it back over to Dazzlin. Dazzlin gonna drive in, <laughs> go up for a shot, and looks like Hampshire is gonna get some, the- She's uh, some free throw back. <laughs> that's right, says, that's I'll, right. I'll shoot it again. Maybe we should can do it a little bit better than the 50% last time. Absolutely. And that will go against uh, Farron Hampshire, her first. Shot is up and no good. Maggie Landon checks in for Cameron Farrell. Second shot is up and no good as well for Dazzlin. Irish has it now for Lady Bison's gonna bring it up the middle. Gets it over to Gabby Hall. Oh, kind of gets stuck in no man's land. Tries to pass it to Irish. Dazzlin Hunt steals it. She's gonna have a breakaway layup here. Shot is up and oh, good for Dazzlin geez. Hunt. Had plenty of momentum. I didn't think she was going to get it. Rolled it all the <laughs> way around the rim, and it uh, siphoned in. Yeah, and it kind of hit the backboard underneath the it hoop, did. too, and kind of had to go up and spin around. So good shot there. Irish will have it with just over a minute left. The 62-37 Lady Bison over top of Lady Cats. Good hands by Ina King as she's trying to knock the ball out of Hampshire's hands. Pass oh, over to pass. Hall. Hall, left-hand layup is good. 64-37. Daz and Hunt will bring it up for Lady Cats. Pass over to Kinsey. Kinsey over to Charlie Slagle. Charlie Slagle with a three. Shot is up. No good off the back of the rim. Through the hands of Ina King, but uh, Kinsey ends up with it. And now Maggie has stepped through. Pass over to Kinsey on the right-hand side. Drive with the left. Back over to Maggie. Maggie going to drive to the right. Spin, oh, shot is move. up, and no good. And rebound off Gabby Hall's foot over to Hampshire. Now Gabby has it. Still some pressure from the Lady Cats, which I love to see, no quit in them. Dazzlin Hunt chases down from behind, steals it from Irish. Uh, oh, gonna dribble. get a double dribble. Uh, <laughs> Such she, a hustle play. She and, did, she yeah. worked hard, got the ball, and had to dribble it to get, gain control, right. and then forgot as she turned around and put it to the floor. Yeah, kind of helped Irish with a couple dribbles down the court, and, <laughs> and then picked it up. and just to gather herself. Hampshire gets it, shot is up, no good. Back out and shot then up by the Lady Bison. Hine and Charlie Segal will come down with it and that will be the end of the game. Lady Bobcats 37, Lady Bison 64 as Lady Cats fall to Lady Bison here uh, on their home court. Good hustle play there, really a good second half for Lady Cats, um, just got da down big in the first half. We're going to take a couple minute break here, be back quick with a post game show and then get right into Bobcat basketball against Buffalo Bison. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Dad, this Dad. We have the biggest and bestest selection in the area. An 172 point expansion. Our sale members are almost as smart as my dad. 
Ask for my Uncle Joey. He's the best. Pay hey, up. Midway when you expect the best. Good job, Kate. For a place to relax, sip on your favorite specialty lattes or tea, and find the best gifts for any occasion, Storyteller is the place for you. Books brimming with compelling stories, gifts for the kids like Legos and coloring projects, and something for your family and friends like hats, jewelry, or a bag of award-winning Mountain Air Roasted Jackrabbit Java. To learn more, visit StorytellerYO.com or swing by at 524 Broadway in Thermopolis. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details only at Sutherland's. You work hard for those you love, putting in long hours because your family's hopes and dreams are worth saving for. That's why Bighorn Federal offers multiple ways to save. Our products can help you start saving for more immediate needs and future goals today. Talk to your local branch about an interest-bearing checking or savings account, education IRA, Roth IRA, CD, or health savings account from Bighorn Federal. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. All right, and we're here uh, for our quick uh, post-game show um, for Lady Bobcats as uh, they fall short to the Lady Bison for a final score of 64 to 37, kind of stay, staying right to their uh, averages for the game. And we'll get right into uh, the quality in um, and sweet stats of the game. We'll put these stats to bed for the Lady Cats. Uh, Dazzlin Hunt with five. Most of those points coming from the free throw line, going three of eight, or yeah, three of eight from the free throw line. Um, let's see, uh, Cameron Farrell leading the Lady Cats with 15 points, kind of scoring in each quarter, doing a great job going one or two of three from the free throw line. J.C. Owsley scoring 10 for the Lady Cats, uh, knocking down a couple of threes of her own, going 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Hannah Hill with a couple buckets for four points. Davidine King going 1 of 2 from the free throw line for a single basket. And then Cadence Bowman, before going out with injury, went 2 of 2 from the free throw line with two points for a total of 37. Chloe Owsley did foul out, and J.C. Owsley ended up with four, but um, just Chloe with the... Uh, foul out nine different scores for Lady Bison to score 64 points. Uh, Carly Davis scoring 10. Tess Rule with four. Uh, Grace Peterson with five. Gabby Hall with two. Uh, Grace Finkel with six. Camry Davis scoring eight. Cassidy Bessler scoring 10. Aubrey Irish scoring six all in the fourth quarter. And then uh, leading all scores for Lady Bison was Isabel Kirkhart uh, with 13 and so three in double digits and really kind of evenly spread out which I think is what we expected uh, from the Lady Bison as well and um, so a good game for uh, the Lady Bison um, on the second half for Lady Cats was really good um, only losing that second half 27-25 it really was the first half that uh, ladies just got down too early and uh, didn't really handle the pressure very well from Lady Bison and caused a lot of turnovers which uh kind of got them in a hole that was just too big to get out of in there for the second half. But it's great to see them not let that, you know, defeat them. And then they came out and play well, Travis. Well, that's exactly right, Kevin. I mean, I, it just took them two quarters to kind of realize, okay, we can handle this press. They figured mm -hmm. out, okay, you can't go down the sideline and get ball to the middle, uh, bringing the uh, number five player up, Slagle or King, and uh, that really helped kind of diffuse that uh, zone press. So then they came at them with man which we've got two uh, point guards that can handle that. Right, so right, absolutely. Unfortunately, it just took longer than uh, you would hope to uh, figure out. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that'll wrap up our uh, Click It or Ticket postgame show, and we'll get right into pregame show for boys Bobcat team. Uh, big win for them uh, yesterday, I think, again, one where they really had to go through some adversity, down 20 to 17, so really hadn't had a game yet this year where they'd uh, scored so few points and a half, and... So uh, the best part was is I think we saw them come out that second half ready to 
do some good things and then immediately turned around, had a 21 to six third quarter and then, uh, you know, outscored them 35 to 14 in the in the second half uh, to come away with an 18 point win. So, um, you know, puts the puts the Bobcats a 4-0 coming up against a really tough and really uh, good Buffalo Bison team. I'm um, going to hear some, you know, names again that we've heard over the last several years from the Bison, one being Eli Patterson, kind of their engine that gets everything going and running, a really fun young man to watch play basketball, very humble. You don't see him do a lot of extra anything. He just does what he's supposed to do, does his job. And then uh, Cam Johnson is another one also that's played for a number of years for uh, the Buffalo Bison. So new new look for them a little bit as they have a new uh, head coach here in uh, Buffalo and uh, going to look to do some other things. Currently, they come in, I think, uh, ranked at, on like Wild Preps number two um, in uh in the 3A, so uh, right behind Douglas. So again, going to be a tough, tough team here to play as well. The record, uh, which Travis will talk about here in a minute, does not, I don't think, is very indicative of what kind of team that they actually are. But because of that, um, why don't you go ahead and uh, give us some numbers here, Travis, what we're looking at well, today. Well, as you mentioned, Kevin, Buffalo's coming in one and three, but they're playing very tough teams. Their uh, one win comes against Rock Springs. They lost to uh, Sheridan last night. They played a uh, uh, tough South Dakota Chamberlain team, and then I think Alliance Nebraska uh, and lost that. So they're coming in, as you say, their uh, record does not reflect what they play. Bobcats actually in the stats department, their points per game is 72, where Buffalo is 56. Bobcats 19 assists to 10 on the uh, for Buffalo. Rebounding margin is again Buffalo 37, uh, or uh, Bobcats 37, Buffalo 24. Steals 16 to 11. And then uh, turnovers is actually 14 to 14. The interesting point is the Buffalo Bison are definitely ahead of us in shooting percentage. They have 8% better shooting percentage from the field at both the uh, two and the three point margin, but 30% improved margin uh, from the free throw line. So the Bobcats are definitely not going to want to uh, send the uh, Bison team to the line. Right, and I, and I would say that was uh, kind of a big difference in the last two wins for the Bobcats. Wheatland not shooting the ball well from the free throw line. Glenrock last night not shooting the ball well from the free throw line, where this is a team that, um, yeah, so uh, you're going to have to be very disciplined on defense, not foul on defense because we don't want to send them to the line, just what we saw from Lady Bison as well. Good free throw shooting team. They're disciplined, um, going to have to play tough. So Bobcats going to come in, and I know their mindset um, no matter how much they were wanting to focus on the Glenrock game as well, <laughs> I know the Buffalo Bison game that was coming up on Saturday was was more of a focal point and and the things that they were we were looking at. This is going to be a good measuring stick for the Bobcats. Um, again, in 3A right now, Bobcats not really well known for what uh, as a team um, with only bringing back one starter and uh, having a number of uh, younger players coming up and playing for the Bobcats. So. Um, because of that, that can really play in their favor as well because, uh, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get, get from them. Yeah, absolutely. And in Buffalo, I think, you know, we really uh, have a pretty good idea of what we're going to be looking at, but that doesn't mean anything either. And, uh, you know, the way these Bobcats are playing, I think there's a lot of high hopes. I think there's a um, – it might just be my feeling uh, uh, alone is a little nervous energy, you know, that, that comes along with uh, games like this and everything. But uh, – you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how these boys come out. I do feel like the Bobcats play so well under control um, just because they, you know, they don't know what they don't know, you know, right. and so yeah. I think they've come really good. So I know you have some keys to the game. We can go ahead and go to those real quick. Travis, what are our uh, Edward Jones uh, keys to the game? Well, brought to you by uh, Travis Winger with Edward Jones. Number one, high energy and team play. We've really seen that through the last uh, four games so far, Kevin, and if they can uh, maintain that, that's going to help. Again, being very aggressive on defense, that helps feed our offensive frenzy getting the ball into the paint. We didn't see that last night in the first half, and it really hurt us. And I think right. against this Buffalo team, if we can do that, that's really going to be a uh, benefit. Uh, next is blocking out and crashing the boards. We've not played a team that really crashes the boards, and Buffalo is disciplined as they are. I'm a little bit worried about what's going to happen there. And then lastly, we got to take care of the ball. Right. I mean, we cannot give them any extra possessions as good as they shoot. So I think that those things, if we can pull that off, it'll be a huge... Uh, a huge thing in regards to putting us in position to potentially win this game. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, with uh, the the Bobcat team coming in being a little um, 
a little uh, unknown or whatever. So, uh, some of the Bison players coming in off the bench is in similar way. They graduated some of their good shooters and their players as well. And so because of that, we're going to see a few new names as well for the for the Bison. And um, with that, we'll go from uh, thanks again for those keys to the game sponsored by Edward Jones and your financial advisor here in Thermopolis, Travis Winger. And um, to go right into our uh, starting lineups of the game uh, provided by Sutherland's here is for the um, for the Bobcats we have uh, Jet Longwell number zero, uh, Canyon Gerber number two, Cody Bomagin number three. We have Zach Hasty coming in number 22 and Brody Potter number 23 coming in for. Um, the Bobcats. As far as the uh, Bison go, we have uh, number three, Cam Johnson. We have number four, Cor Cordian Smith. We have number five, Ryan Nichols. We have number 15, Eli Patterson. And number 23, Brady Engling, as uh, they come uh, into the game here and get ready to go. And uh, yeah, excited to see what they do today, Jeff. Yeah, so one thing uh, you know better the coaching uh, realm than I do, but I think uh, uh, Bison do have a new uh, head coach. Right, right. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see uh, how how that comes out and wh how it affects um, the these uh, Bobcats and how the Bison play. What what we might see different from what we've seen because their previous coach, um, you know, stepped up. He'd been the freshman coach. Um, and then came in and, and took over as head coaching for the last several years. So now uh, it you know it'll be different to see what he brings to. Uh, well, but he comes with experience. Right, comes He's from the, uh, Burlington, uh, Burlington. And then the last four five years they've been to the state tournament and uh, taken away titles. I think two of those years. Right, yeah, and have been really good. So set Eli Patterson and Brody Potter go up and uh, Jet Longwell hustles it down, gets it to Zach Hasty up the near side here to Cody Bomagin. Buffalo coming out in man-to-man. -man. Back over to Brody Potter. Good oh, head nice. fake there. Drives baseline. Kicks out to Canyon Gerber. Almost gets tipped. Oh, Jump shot great. here Pull by Canyon. Jumper. Short there. And rebound comes down to Nichols. Nicholas. Man-to-man uh, -man defense here. So good, good sequence. Open sequence for the Bobcats there. Shot just didn't go down. Eli Patterson has the ball. Jet Longwell going to get the assignment off at the beginning. And a little high... High uh, post there, Eli Patterson, jump shot for him up and no good. Cam Johnson's gonna come down, or I apologize, that is gonna be Engling that comes down with it and Potter is gonna get the foul. Well, and, and Potter wouldn't have had the foul if he had been blocked out. We've talked about that before and they're crashing and our guys are standing there watching rather than putting a body on them. Right, and uh, it's exactly what you said. We haven't had that type of crashing going to the board and uh, right on cue with how their free throw shooting is. Engling goes ahead and puts in the first. And uh, <laughs> right on cue, Kevin. Right on cue. <laughs> and uh, we'll get that Sutherland's off. And then another rebound there by Patterson as Patterson tries to throw it into the corner, but Cody Bomagin gets a steal. So again, another offensive board for the Bison. Pass over to Bomagin. Bomagin has it over here on the sidelines. Gonna get it into Zach Casey. Zach Casey gonna drive to the right. Good Ooh. drive there. Oh, tries to kick it over, gets oh, it to Brody. Brody goes up high. Oh, tries to get up high above the rim, unable to get it put down and kind of got caught in no man's land. I have never felt that before, but I imagine <laughs> it's a good feeling to not know if you're supposed to dunk it or just lay it in. I don't think he liked having that feeling in. So. I don't think so either. And uh, Smith with the ball now. Looks like we're going to get a three second call there on uh, number 23, Brady Engling, as he's just kind of standing at the high post waiting for the ball, but had a uh, his feet in. Don't see the three second called very often, especially at the high post area. And Gerber's gonna bring the ball up, get Zach Hasty. Zach Hasty back over to Gerber. Good, hard defense here from, uh, from Bison. They're gonna have their work cut out all day. Bobcats are, oh, tough pass there, but Brody Potter's able to get it. Kicks it back over to Zach. Zach wide open in the corner, shot is up oh, and good for Zach Hasty. for three, baseline. And Bobcats open up scoring, uh, going up three to one over the top of the Bison. And uh, Johnson now with the ball with Brody Potter on him. Brody, oh, good hard cross, crossover and drive there. And shot is up and good for England. So England with three points for the Bison, the only scorer for Bison so far. And Zach Hasty oh, gonna nice try drive. to drive it in. Oh, he's gonna get called for travel as he's 
bobbling the ball. Oh, we got, oh, they, yeah. we got a foul called first. Override. So, yeah. I respect the refs that I, have a good enough relationship, and if they see something because of their angles a little bit better, they'll absolutely. do a correction. So really, I like that both ways. I mean, it goes against us sometimes, but in that situation, that was the right call. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. And like you said, uh, you know, they're a team too, and uh, it worked out good. Pass in from Gerber to Potter. Potter probably just needed to hang on to the ball, not put it on the ground. Cam Johnson oh, gets it knocked away by behind. Cody Bomagin. Passes up to Brody Potter. Potter going to take it all the way, and he's going to get a, a little anticipation call there, I think, <laughs> by the ref. I think it was the right call, but he yeah, was calling he did, it. His, he did blow it before it actually happened. Yeah, and uh, that is going to go against Eli Patterson, which was a good move on Potter to just go right at him because uh, he does he is kind of the engine for this team, so picking up an early foul there. Potter's Ooh. first is good. Up and in. Well, and I'm liking the energy from the bench tonight, Kev. We've uh, right. seen that uh, all season so far. We've got good, loud energy from the bench and a lot more volume on the floor on the defensive end from the Cats. Well, and a shout out to our student section as well. They always do a good job of bringing some energy as well. So, uh, Second one is up and no good by Patterson. Patterson gets it, gets it knocked away there by Zach Hasty. Zach Hasty will get it to Gerber, Gerber to Longwell, to Potter. Now Gerber back up, passes over to Cody Bomagin. Gonna cut through. Cody kicks out to Potter. Potter not afraid to shoot the three. Three is up, no good. Oh, Gerber good gets rebound. A rebound as Jet Longwell pokes it away. It looks like Gerber, as he's trying to dribble through, is gonna pick up a foul as well. Coach uh, has not enjoyed any of the three fouls that have been called against uh, Buffalo. Well, I think uh, the Bobcats might be surprising Buffalo a little bit because Buffalo hasn't really seen them, and I don't think we're on very many people's radar to this point. So no, absolutely. And they're seeing a little or getting a little more than they bargained for. Right, and the good thing is that's another foul on oh, Patterson. Nice pass. Good pass there from Zach, Zach Hasty to Hits, Bomagin. Yeah, Bomagin for the easy cut through layup. Zach is so patient on that out of bounds play. Absolutely, and it, it sometimes you hate when they pass it in so quick because uh, you just need to let it let, let it develop, like develop. you said. Oh, miscommunication. Good, good rebound there by Cody Bomagin going up high after the missed shot by Engling. Gets it back to Cody. Cody to Hasty up the left hand side. And like I said, uh, Eli. Oh, uh, I tell you what, Kevin. Yeah. Buffalo's going to have to. Oh, here comes a uh, substitution. And uh, into the game will be uh, Zane Huber. Huber, he will come in for Ryan Nicholas. Ryan Nicholas picks up his first foul, um, but that is the team's fourth already. 4.48 left here in the quarter. Tough pass there, but Gerber runs it down. Oh, unfortunate and travel there. Looks like they're gonna call a travel on Gerber. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe he picked up his pivot. Well, obviously picked up his pivot foot to get it called. A lot of questions from the coaches there on that call. Huber now with the ball, looks to pass it over to Johnson. Johnson now has it. And uh, Bobcat's gonna have to make sure they don't trail through on the cutters here on this offense. Eli Patterson has it, good jab step there. Gerber gonna reach in. Oh, it looks like they might call it on Jet Longwell. I think they will. Gerber had a good uh, tip out and uh, Jet was just trying to contain. And right. uh, Eli Patterson is more than a handful. He is. And that'll be the team second, Jets first. So Armani Dukes will uh, now come in to uh, guard, guard uh, Eli. That'll be Zane. an interesting matchup. I was kind of hoping we'd see that tonight. Right. Oh, nice and shot. And Huber pull-up jumper there yeah. for two, five. Now Bobcats leading six, five in this one. Potter with it. He's going to drive hard here. Oh, and blocking foul. That's going to be, oh, wait. Or charge. He changed um, his call. I can't. He gave the blocking call and then he did the uh, offensive call. Oh, they, yep. do. they do call it again. Yeah, that'll he did be change. his second. So we talked about they can change each other's call. Right. And, uh, I guess you can change your own call. All right. And that was a tough one. I, I, and I honestly would have agreed either way. Yeah, I think no, if they would have called a blocking foul, but I think it's just because of that lower than the shoulder. Yeah. And uh, that's Potter's second. That would have been Patterson's third foul had he picked the one up which is kind of what the Bobcats would like to do. Good head fake there, good challenge by Bomagin. Shots up, no uh -huh. good offensive board, but oh, steal throwy. there by Potter gets it into Gerber's hands. Gerber back over, oh, oh tries to get it away. to Potter, but tipped away by Huber out of bounds. So Longwell set to come back in now. He'll come in for Potter, I imagine. Yeah. And I think uh, even though he took that charge, I think Patterson uh, got the worst of it because he's uh, <laughs> his eyes are watering pretty good. Yeah, he's still rubbing his nose. Right. 
Uh, Cody Bomagin now has it here as they get set up from their offense. Zach Hasty fit up the, on the right hand side. He's going to drive baseline. Oh, going to call an offensive foul on him as well. And I, I the last he, one I agreed with that yeah. one. I assuming he just did a little clear out, I guess. But with his forearm. Yeah, I, th I mean that's kind of what he what he called was as he drove baseline, but. Coach looks like he maybe agreed with the call because he's just telling Zach to jump stop there on that baseline drive. Huber now with the ball, gonna look to pass it in. Not really able to find anybody. Bobcats playing good, hard defense here in the game. And 23 with the ball here, gets it out to Huber. Huber shoots the three and up, and Zach Hasty is gonna pick up another foul here as uh, uh, looks like uh, the foul count, and that was on a three, so that's going to put Huber to the line to shoot three. Well, and he's uh, he's playing good aggressive ball. I mean, you can't knock it, uh, but you know he backed up a little bit too far, and I think he hit him before the he reestablished his feet. The right. shooter reestablished his feet on the block out is what I think happened. Right. So Zach Casey will Zach Casey will have to come out of the game as uh, Del Dukes is set to check in, but because it's uh, a a uh, three shot foul, he has to wait till the next one is shot. First one was a miss, so keeps the score at six to five. Second one is up and good. Six to six is the score. We got 320 left in the uh, first quarter. And the second one is up and good. That will give the Bison a one point lead. Cody Bomagin gets it. Pass over to Del Dukes, back to Cody Bomagin. Finds Longwell, Longwell kicks it out oh. to Gerber. Gerber. Gerber open on the three, oh, a little long. Shot is up, good, and uh, Patterson gets a rebound. A little rushed on this shot there, I think. Patterson over to the corner, left open. Ooh, wide open. Four, but no good. Oh, Gerber, Gerber goes up high for the board, rebound. Or defensive board. Yeah, gets a rebound. Coach is uh, calling for an over back. I was gonna say uh, over and back, I think over the back Or over the sure. back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Monty. Had his brother gets blocked. Then oh, Monty gets his Monty own rebound. Goes takes up the big guy down. I could have right. called a foul on that, but I think the uh, angle that the ref had, he couldn't really see how much contact no, was there. And I, but Eli I, definitely fell. Yeah, I think there was some good acting going on. Yeah, they're a little bit of both. Right. Armani's not a light body. No. So no. when he hits you, you feel it. Cam Johnson now has it, and they're going to call three seconds again up at Same the top. Same player, of the, yeah. that's Engling. Yep, and uh, for just standing up at the top of the key, maybe the new court having the volleyball line where <laughs> it's at, he's not 100% sure where that free throw line is. Well, we've had a couple people try to uh, shoot free throws from there at practice, right. so uh-oh. Del Dukes has it to Longwell. Cody, Cody's going to be left open. Cody's going to shoot the three. Shot is up. No good. P good. Oh, 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 from behind. Oh, and that's going to be Eli three Patterson. fouls on Eli Patterson. That's that is be his huge. Third. I thought it was just going to be a tip out of bounds. I thought he blocked Armani, but they're saying they hit him with the yeah, body. So Armani goes to the line, and that's huge because, as you said, the engine of the team has now got three and heading to the sideline. Well, and this is really similar to what happened last year when they played him in Buffalo. Uh, uh, Patterson got into foul trouble early, um, I think, courtesy of... Ellis Weber as Monty knocks down his first of two free throws. Uh, Ellis Weber, I think, picked up two early fouls off of uh, Patterson last year and got him into foul trouble. And uh, so he's going to have to come down and sit now with three fouls, still with two minutes left in this uh, first quarter. And Monty's second one is up and good. Monty so has good definitely shot. been the best foul shooter for the team this year. And that's going to give a three-point lead to the Bobcats as Ellis Weber and Will Cole check in for the first time for the Bobcats. You're seeing some full-court pressure. Right, Cam Johnson going to bring it up the sidelines now. And now with Eli out, Bobcats set to give a little bit more full-court pressure. Shot is up and no good by number zero there, Kai Peters. And good rebound by Del Dukes. Gets Great it into, position. Yeah, gets it into Will Cole's hands. And now Monty Dukes has it. He's going to drive to the right-hand side. Shot is up and good oh, for Armani Monty Dukes. Not afraid. They got the big guy on the sideline. He says, give me the ball. That's right. And that was one of my, I think that's one of the best shots I've taken, seen Monty Dukes take this year as he just didn't hesitate at all. Will Almost. Cole gets a tip. Oh, and good, good defense there. Jump ball. And a jump ball by Will Cole goes all right. in as uh, number Bobcats four comes in. Bobcats are on a roll, 12 yeah. to 7. We got good. 125 left in the first. Buffalo coaches his arms kind of questioning. Yeah. And again, uh, looks like jump ball does go to Buffalo, but uh, again, you know, uh, kind of uh, Bobcats coming out not scared at all in this game and uh, playing just 
great defense, and it's been leading, to, again, to their offense up 12-7. Oh, good move. Kai Peters tries to drive, gets a good head fake, drives left-handed and dribbles it off his foot and goes out of bounds. Ellis Weber with the intimidation factor there yeah, in the corner. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ellis and Del Duke's going to play catch here as they just break the 1-2-2 two, two full court press. Oh, it's, it's kind tough of a three-quarter court press. Yeah. And, uh, the coach had told him earlier in the week, that is not one we dribble through. We have to have pass. Have to pass through. Cam Johnson gets it. His first shot is up and no good. Armani Dukes comes down with it. Ellis Weber here on the sideline. Doesn't look like all the Buffalo Bison were on the same page as far as if they are full court pressure or not. Del Dukes has it here at the top. He's going to drive to the lane. He goes up. Ooh, gets a hand. On, someone got a hand on it. He gets it back, <laughs> though. And up Del for Dukes, the shot. just like last night, yeah. he has so much presence on the floor and knows where the ball is. Shoots the ball, patiently waits, grabs it on his own offensive board, and back up in. Well, Bobcats and then go into the full court press and uh, have a tip out. Yeah, and I mean, Del Dukes has the shortest memory of anybody, too, so he doesn't care if he misses it. He's just going to go get blocked. the ball. Or he blocked, doesn't yeah. care. It's like, I'm just going back again. Yep, and just goes right back in. So great play there. All right, so ball brought up here by the Bobcats. Bobcats doing good now. They're going to go to their 1-3-1 uh, zone here see if they can uh, cause a few more turnovers or got a little bit of a taller group in here. And, and, and right on cue, they do. Bomagin has it, passes oh, Brody. baseball to Brody. Brody yeah. going to drive yeah. in tough, but gets his own rebound. Knew that first shot uh. wasn't going to go in <laughs> and gets his own rebound and puts it back in. Nice hustle yeah. by Potter. And it was a smart play by was. Potter because he knew it wasn't going in. Shot is up oh. and good on the buzzer by number 11, 30 Huber. 30-foot shot, Huber ah, brings the score to 16-10. to 10. Right. Oh, That would have been nice to go in the, the 16, uh, second seven, quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, it uh, shows the uh, Bobcats leading 16-10 over the Bison. We're going to take a quick break. We'll re be right back for second quarter action right after this. Broadcast is Bailey Enterprises. For over 50 years, Bailey has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey. I'm Travis Winger. I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And we do, you know, I pride myself on helping people with financial planning, uh, achieving whatever goals are most important to them. The most valuable thing you have when it comes to planning for your future is time. The, the sooner you start and the more detailed your plan is, the better chance of success you have. First timers are my favorite people to work with because they're hungry to learn and coming to see me doesn't cost anything. I don't charge for appointments, I don't charge for anything. Come in, talk to me and all you'll leave with is a little bit more knowledge than you came in with. Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Travis Winger, 435 Arapahoe Street, Thermopolis. Ouch. All right, and we're back here for second quarter action as Bobcats take the lead and the ball here to start the second 16-10 with a three-pointer by Huber late uh, at the end, on the buzzer to get to 10. Bobcats really outplaying the Bison so far in this game. Oh, good look uh -huh. there by Bomagin. Uh, Longwell not quite ready for it. Goes off his hands, and Bison come away with it. Nicholas has it here for the Bison. Gets it to Cam Johnson. Going to stay in that 1-3-1. One, one. Good trap here by the Bobcats. Challenging Johnson. Johnson struggling to get it out. He does get it out to Nicholas. Fake there by Huber. Huber scoring seven of the ten points for the Bison in this game. Jump pass from him to Huber. Oh, Johnson has movement. it. Johnson three-pointer open, no good. Good box out there by Longwell. Longwell gets Oop. it over to Del Dukes. Kind of a tough pass there, but Del Dukes handles it all right. Gets it to Cody Bomagin on the right-hand side. Good patience there by Bomagin. Let him set up in their offense. Del Dukes over to Zach Hasty. Going to run a screen and roll here. Oh, good screen oh. and roll. Oh, and it was there. Just a little too much for uh, Longwell to hang on well, to Longwell kind of delayed a little. I think he kind of got caught. And then by Zach was thinking he was going to roll his normal speed. By the time he rolled, yeah. he was just a step behind. And then uh, to keep that pressure on, they're going to bring in uh, Ellis and uh, Cole to play tough defense here in this press. 
And good defense there by Longwell as he gets his hands out and knocks it out of bounds again. So, again, not necessarily causing the turnovers, but it's giving, just wreaking havoc on what uh, the Bison are trying to do as well. And kind of seeing a little bit of frustration from them too because they're just like, man, every pass we're making, it's getting tipped or something. So, uh, Smith with the ball here. Ellis on him back to a man-to-man -man defense. Good switch there as Armani's now on Smith. Smith has to kick it out to the top of the key. And a travel Ooh, there dead. by Ingling. Uh, yeah. Yep. They're all over the travels today. They're watching yeah, all the happy feet, aren't they? <laughs> they are. I think you could slap around up top a little yeah. bit and be safe. This would have been a game Kevin Gerber would not have succeeded <laughs> in. Oh, and then a tip pass there from Ellis trying to pass it across to Dell. Uh, he is going to foul, foul on a frustration Smith. Foul, I think. Yeah, sure was. But thankfully, he fouled him hard enough that he didn't make the layup. But that is going to send Smith to the free throw line. Gerber getting ready to uh, check in. 16-10 is the score still here. Uh, a little over a minute and a half into this second quarter. First one up by Smith is up and good. So just the third uh, player for the Bison to score. Gerber checks in for uh, Weber at this point. Second shot is up. Sure. No good. Lane violation. Double somewhere. lane violation. Oh, so it's a double violation because uh, one from each team did, and then they uh, jump ball it, and it looks like it stays with Bison. I think you're right. They're talking about it right now, right. but uh, since they both did, that's what it should be. Be interesting to see what the call is here. Now they're kind of just trying to all speak to make sure that they know what it is. So it is jump a jump ball, ball right? Yeah. And that will stay with Bison. So free throw was missed, but because there was a violation by each team, it just becomes a jump ball, which then will give the ball under the hoop to the Bison. I don't know if I've seen it before. So, and ball goes out to Smith here at the top of the key. And uh, Nicholas is going to kind of pause here and get them all set up with Dukes on him. Now back to the corner here to Smith. Smith over to Huber. Huber going to pass it in. Oh, oh give and go. Back. Bad behind him. Luckily, uh, not a great pass to him on that give and go because he was open. He and was. Monty Dukes comes away with it. Will Cole now has it. Going to dribble drive into some traffic. Kicks it out to Gerber. Oh, Gerber pull three. up three. Shot is, oh, in and out. No good, but good rebound by Longwell. Oh, and they're going to call him. push off on uh, Longwell. That, was it on him? I didn't know if it was him or Monty. Yeah. Oh, they are going to call it on Longwell. So what looked like a good offensive board ended up just being because he created some space. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't blame a guy. He's nope. a little crowded. So second team foul. That is uh, second on Jet as well. So Bobcats keep this full court press on up. 16-11 in the game and into the middle of the Cam Johnson. And now bring it up fast on the side here is Smith and gets it back into Nicholas's hands. Now Johnson up at the top of the key. Passes into Hugh. Oh, oh man, good. left oh, alone. Good hold. And drive in and good by Engling as he scores two. That's got to be a practice play because they did that. They every single time giving right. the ball off, he just held and then spun away from yeah. it. And uh, great play, untouched. Absolutely takes it to the rim. And that gives uh, cuts the Bobcats' lead from uh, 16 to 13 over the Bison. We're going to take a quick timeout as they discuss what to do next. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. All right, and we're back here uh, after the timeout. Bobcat's going to take every available second of the timeout. Going to come out and uh, have the ball here. Uh, Bobcat's scoreless here in this second quarter, still holding a three-point lead, 16-13, as uh, Bison are going to show some pressure here. Cross-court pass to Bomagin. Bomagin into Gerber. Gerber going to hang on to it, Ooh. get it back to Bomagin. Made me nervous. Yeah. 
A lot of black jerseys. Oh, and then another travel there is going to be called on Bombajin. I think he started moving maybe a little bit early, but I don't know if I've agreed with too many of the travel calls on either side, but they're calling it even so far, so I guess we're going to have to accept it. And I've noticed the refs haven't asked me if I was accepting it or not yet either. <laughs> yeah, they haven't looked up to get your approval, no. I've noticed. And uh, Bobcats play a little bit better on that handoff play there as Johnson drives in. Potter doing a good job oh, on Peter, him. Great baseline. Yeah, it was. Oh, and in and out pass. Cam Johnson wide open, and Johnson's going to knock it down to tie the ball game up at 16. So, again, Bobcats going to have to work for everything they're going to have. Bison oh. as well. Cody gets it strong hands there. Pass it over to Monty Dukes. Monty open on the baseline, drives up, hits the Blocking bottom of the foul. rim, but is going to get fouled there by Ryan Nicholas, I believe. Shooting two. So Dukes, who is not a bad person to have on the line, will be heading there for Absolutely. two. Absolutely. Be good to see us get off that 16 points as well. That was uh, Ryan Nicholas's second foul as well. There good first. Shot up and in for uh, Monty. First of two. Good job there. Gives the Bobcats a 17-16 lead. And Nicholas will have to come out of the game as uh, Kai Peters comes in. Hopefully whoever's guarding Kai remembers he's left-handed and <laughs> really enjoys going left. So that'll probably be Weber's job. Second one is Ooh, up and nice. good. Monty is just doing a great job from the line this year. He is, and man, that free throw brought some rain. Yeah. It was nice yeah, that's and high archer. He's making Absolutely. Them. Cam Johnson now with it with uh, Bomagin on it. Spin move is up and good by Cam. So Cam kind of forcing the issue here to try to get some scoring for the Bison. Cross court pass to Potter. Potter over to Gerber. Gerber back oh, to Monty pass. Dukes. Good pass there. Dukes head fake shot is up. No good. And then Engling's going to bring the ball down. Going to get a jump ball. So Bobcat's going to keep it. And Andrew Howell's going to set to come in for the first time. He'll come in for Ellis Weber. Score tied 18-18 with 4-12 left in the second. And Gerber set to take it out here. And Monty Dukes not going to be there. Tough pass. And good job by Andrew getting it over to Potter. He had to grab the ball. He was trying to wait, but had to grab it. Good play there by Bomagin to be patient with it. Ball gets tipped, ends up in Kai Peters' hands. He's going to drive up the left-hand side. Travel there, not called, but <laughs> Cam Johnson now has it. Just a few gathering steps there. And now Peters has it up at the top of the key. Pass over to Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson now to Engling. Engling's going to hand it off to Johnson. And good backdoor cut there by Huber. And uh, That's three for Brody. Yeah, it's going to be a foul there. It's a good try to get that steal, but unfortunately that's going to give him his third and the team's third. So Cody and Brody are going to come out as Zach Hasty and uh, Jet Longwell come in for the Bison. Huber now with the ball. Gerber on him. Huber going to pass over to Peters. Peters now with Andrew on him. Andrew playing good defense there. Engling has it. Good job by Monty. Just kind of being patient. Pokes it away. Longwell almost had a chance to go get it. And shot is up. No good off the front of the rim. Gerber there comes by down with this. Smith. And then Gerber gets it. Pass it to Longwell. Back to Gerber. Gerber will bring it up. Pass it to Andrew. Ooh. Andrew tries to go around the back. And ball's going to go off his foot and will go to the Bison. Looks like we're going to get a timeout here. 18-18, uh, 315 left here in this first half. We're going to take a quick timeout as well. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Looking for a clean, comfortable room in Thermopolis? Quality Inn of Thermopolis offers great rates with your choice of king, queen, or family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Reserve your room today. Call 307-864-5515. Amenities include free hot breakfast, pet-friendly, premium free Wi-Fi, indoor pool, truck parking, and more. Reserve your room today by calling 307-864-5515. Quality Inn of Thermopolis. Thermopolis. Stop in to Vicklin Pharmacy in Thermopolis to see what a hometown pharmacy really feels like. It's the only locally owned and operated pharmacy in town and they are a compounding pharmacy to boot. They offer prescriptions, medical equipment, Medicare open enrollment, medication therapy management and more. Vicklin Pharmacy can save you time and money. The service you deserve from the neighbors you trust. 
Vicklin Pharmacy, conveniently located inside Max Market in Thermopolis. All right, and we're back after the timeout here. 3.15 left in this first half, 18-18 all tied up. Kind of what we thought was going to happen in this game, Travis. Just a hard-fought game. Nobody's going to get anything easy. And foul's going to be kind of an issue for both teams. Yeah, and both big guys are uh, for the teams who are on the bench right now. Brody from Thermopolis and Eli Patterson from uh, Buffalo. Right, Bobcats come out now in a 2-3 zone. Try to give a different look here against uh, the Bison. So kind of extended here too. And uh, Bobcats have played this really well. You just see all five guys jump to the ball. They're all moving on any pass. They're not waiting for somebody to catch it. And that's what you want in a 2-3 zone for it to be effective. Jet Longwell doing a good job coming up from the bottom to kind of force the issue. Johnson has it now. Trying to set up good help side defense from the team. Deep Super three. deep Holy three. Shot smokes. is up. No good. Monty Dukes with a good box out. Andrew comes and knocks it into Johnson's hand. Kim Johnson jumps up. No good. Longwell gets it, and then he's going to get slapped on the arm by Smith, which... Uh, is what we've seen a number of times. I mean, anybody coming down with the ball, somebody's swiping down yeah. at the ball. So uh, that time, Jet secured it really well. That's three. Or I'm sorry, that's uh, the second one on Smith. Team's second foul. And uh, Cody Bomagin checks back in. Passes over to, to Gerber. Passes up to Longwell. Mm. And cross court to Cody. Good pass there by oh. Jet to get it out of trouble. Armani. Monty's in there. Good pump fake. And then with I'm that way, okay with yeah, that. With the way they're calling fouls right now, it uh, plays into Monty's pump fake yes, for sure. Exactly. And they like to jump. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely. mean, he's proven that. I was telling before the game, Monty, you'd first couple times just turn around and shoot quick. But uh, this game, I think this is a perfect thing to I do because these guys got springs built in the bottom of their shoes. First one is up and good. So he Armani. stays perfect on the free throw line here as he goes great gives from the, the line. Lead. Being our lone scorer here in this second quarter, uh, keeping us with that lead. Second one is up and good as it rolls, rolls around. In. Good job there by Monty. Ball quickly up the sidelines. Gets it into Peters now, getting trapped there, and a kickball there by Zach. Good defense good there. I like this group running this 2-3 zone too because they're, they're tall and long. They got good reach when they put their arms up. And they heard me because they all put their arms up. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> almost on cue, Coach. <laughs> uh, and uh, ball back and forth here. Again, uh, it's going to slow the pace of the game a little bit. A 2-3 zone does good oh, defense good there by Zach Hasty. Oh, he, and he's fouled three times. And Holy as he's smokes. trying to get the ball, and Zach Hasty going to dive for the ball. Monty Duke's now getting on the ball. Bodies all over the place. Going to call a jump ball. I'll Stop the what. action in it. And opening I'm, is really preaching the 50-50 possessions, and yeah. we had two guys diving on the ball. Right, and I believe this should go to the Bobcats. I agree with Corpening on this one because the yeah, they violation, yeah, when the violation happened, they did not give the ball to, uh, yeah, so it will be a jump ball, but they will go to the Bobcats. So um, good questions there by uh, Coach Corpening. And uh, we'll see what happens now. So refs, a number of times here have had to get together. Oh, but uh, start it. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not even going to speculate on maybe what happened there. But uh, Well, I think there must have been some other jump that we didn't remember maybe forgot, down on this yeah, end. That could be. So ball gets in two Peters here. Bobcat's going to stay in that 2-3 zone. Oh, oh almost pass. got a steal there. Back out to Peters. Peters left hand shot is up too long. Monty Dukes comes down with it, passes out to Zach Hasty. No numbers, but Longwell does have a little step. Oh, I thought Zach was going to pop that shot. Would have liked it. to see him. Monty Dukes going to now drive in, feeling it. Oh, oh good great pass, pass to Jet Longwell. Again, Jet's Jet gonna, not quite ready for no, it, but goes up strong, unable to score, and then Jet's going to pick up a quick foul there as well. Frustration one there. That'll be his third Team and fourth. team's fourth. Yeah. We got one minute, 23 seconds left in the uh, half. Bobcats leading 20 to 18. Foul counts equal at threes. That's Jets' third foul. Jets' third, and uh, Brody has three. So uh, we'll Patterson. See if they leave him in there. Right. I don't see a sub coming in, so. Have to play smart here on the defensive end, not pick up that fourth Which here. He's in the done early before. Half. He has. Back and forth here again. Uh, Bobcats just uh, rotating here in this 2 3 zone. They move the ball around, gets it into high post, out to Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson shot is Ooh, up and nice good, shot. knocks down his third or his second three. Bison take the lead, 21-20, with 59 seconds left on the clock. 
Gerber cross court to Zach Casey. Zach Casey Deep left three. open, short, short on the three. Shot is up, and oh man, that was another that was quick, quick, quick foul. Yeah, almost before, before the he ball even came down, he did. He did blow it, and Armani was there, but he called the foul before it actually happened. Second That's time we've seen right. that. Once for them, once for us. So again, they are being fair. Right. And that is going to send uh, Smith to the line, who is one of two from the free throw line in this quarter and in the game. Uh, I bet you they're going to get uh, Jet out of here with 50 seconds left. Dell's we're getting ready to check in. First shot is up and is good for Smith. Lead uh, widens 22 to 20, and uh, Dell Dukes checks in for Jet Longwell, yeah. who has three fouls. Smart play. Good play to get him out. Yeah, we'll need him in that second half. Second one is up and violation as he steps over too quick so no good there and again uh, kind of almost knew it was going in and was just getting ready to set up in his press and uh, stepped over too early Zach Hasey now has it from Gerber back and forth from Hasey to Gerber oh lazy pass there but it got in through Gerber gets oh, it to the middle to Mani oh, oh mm. just trying to pass over the top to, from Dukes to Dukes but uh, gets stolen by Engling and Smith's going to get it here, fakes the shot at the three. Cam Johnson, don't want to leave him open, knocking down two. Shot is up and no good, going to go off the back of the backboard as uh, that shot by Nicholas is no good. So 25 seconds, Kevin. We got 25 seconds down by two. See if the Bobcats can uh, be disciplined for the last shot. And just be patient with the ball. I feel like there's just some panic with the press here as Cam Ooh, Johnson comes over, see who the they foul. call this one on because they were both going up for the ball, so well, I'm not sure. The Buffalo player was moving to the side, right. so I think it, with him being the motion uh, person, I think I'm pretty sure that he's going to get the foul. Johnson. Right. And they they yep. will call that on Cam Johnson, so it's the way I, I agree with you, especially. Or we, Angling, actually, is the one Oh, they did call the it on Angling. Oh, okay. And Johnson's trying to argue that it was yeah. on him, but. Uh, it was on Johnson. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's sometimes looking like somebody else pays off. That time uh, he felt like it didn't. Out to Gerber. Gerber oh, nice three. three. Oh, and good. nothing and Gerber but back to the down. left side. Gerber. And that'll give him the lead. 23-22 with two seconds left. No shot. Jim Johnson shot is up. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Man, they almost they hit They were going to let that one. go. I, I was going to say, I, I thought he uh, was, it left his hands after the uh, buzzer, but the buzzer took a little longer than I thought. So That's uh, right. <laughs> take a quick look at the uh, scoreboard here. Bobcats leading 23-22 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. End of the first half. Good half of basketball here between the Buffalo Bison and the Bobcats. Uh, good test here for Bobcats. So with that, um, we are going to take a quick break, and we will come back with the halftime show right after this. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit, because we're more than a bank in Wyoming. We're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Dad is Dad. We have the biggest and bestest selection in the area. And 172 point expectations. Our sale members are almost as smart as my dad. Ask for my Uncle Joey. He's the best. Pay up. Midway when you expect the best. Job, Kate. Yeah. For a place to relax, sip on your favorite specialty lattes or tea, and find the best gifts for any occasion, Storyteller is the place for you. Books brimming with compelling stories, gifts for the kids like Legos and coloring projects, and something for your family and friends like hats, jewelry, or a bag of award-winning Mountain Air Roasted Jackrabbit Java. To learn more, visit StorytellerYO.com or swing by at 524 Broadway in Thermopolis. 
The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details only at Sutherland's. You work hard for those you love, putting in long hours because your family's hopes and dreams are worth saving for. That's why Bighorn Federal offers multiple ways to save. Our products can help you start saving for more immediate needs and future goals today. Talk to your local branch about an interest-bearing checking or savings account, education IRA, Roth IRA, CD, or health savings account from Bighorn Federal. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. All right, and we're here at halftime. And uh, uh, Travis, I know you've been on the phone getting some updates on some of our other sporting events going around uh, the state. So what do you have for us? Well, the freshman boys, they're up at that uh, level tournament. Uh, they beat Warland 41 to 36, but then lost to Powell 39 to 60. I think they've got one more game against uh, Cody, but haven't gotten a score there. The uh, Bobcat or the Lady Bobcat wrestlers actually had a great day. Both Alex Sorensen at 155 and uh, Lily uh, Quintanilla. Quintanilla, yep. She, uh, they put first at the uh, Warland Tournament, which is a really big tournament. There's a right. lot of 4A schools in that, so uh, great job to both those. Then Kaylee Allen comes in with uh, fourth and uh, Caitlin Barrel uh, with fourth as well. So the Lady Bobcats did very well. Uh, the Bobcats did not fare as well. Cannonborn did take second, but he was the only one uh, placing in the uh, medals. So, uh, boys not uh, having a little bit rougher time, but the girls really uh, doing a good job. Yeah, and I know that is a big tournament. That's uh, both Lily and Alex's uh, second wins here uh, early in the season. In, in big tournaments. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, good for them and uh, good for the lady uh, Bobcat wrestling team as well. And there's Alex right across the way strutting her thing, being excited about, <laughs> about her win. So that's good. Um, but as, as we go here um, for our halftime show, um, we uh, look at some of our stats. And uh, again, a number of Bobcats scoring for um, for their team, which is always really good to have good balance scoring. Uh, Gerber knocking down that three late in the second quarter to give them the lead, the one point lead, 23-22. Cody Bomagin having a bucket for two points. Del Duke scoring a bucket on that kind of wild uh, uh, loose ball play, get picking it up and scoring a layup. Zach Hasty knocking down an early three for three points. Potter going one of two from the free throw line and a bucket for three points. Does have those three fouls. Longwell with the three fouls as well, which uh, kind of put them on the bench a little bit earlier than they would have liked. Armani Dukes leading the scoring for the Bobcats with 10, going 6-6 six six from the free throw line, which has been huge in this game. Um, and when we go to the other side here and look at uh, the Bison, uh, eight points for Cam Johnson, all of that damage done in the second quarter as he's able to knock down two threes. Uh, Smith going uh, two of four from the free throw line, actually made one other one but had a violation, so it did not count. Zane Huber doing all his damage in the first quarter, um, scoring seven points, seven of their ten points uh, in the first quarter, and then Brady Engling scoring five points. So only four scorers there for the Bison in this game, so the Bobcats doing a good job of uh, holding them back again. Eli Patterson got him into foul trouble early, and uh, that'll have to be a, a key for them as well, I think, in this uh, second half to kind of attack him. It'll be interesting to see what Coach decides to do um, with with him if he starts him right away in the uh, third quarter or not. Um, and same with uh, Corpenine, say, got... what are we going to do with Potter and, and Longwell? Because they've done a good job on the defensive side as well and see um, how they do. So uh, it's been good. So those are our uh, quality in halftime stats of the game. And um, as we continue here for this uh, halftime show, Travis, I mean, what do you see, you know, kind of from those keys to the game that we talked about at the beginning, what carries over into the second half? Well, I think the energy was great in the uh, first quarter. They maintained that. The team play was great. They were passing the ball, cutting the ball, hitting the open man. The defense was super aggressive. We were getting the ball into the paint multiple times. We got them into some foul trouble. Where we've gotten in trouble is we haven't been protecting the glass. Right. Uh, both ends, they've been kind of uh, beating us to the glass, getting some extra shots on offensive boards and uh, g uh, getting uh, great rebounds on the defensive end. So, And we've had, Kevin, some 
stupid uh, turnovers that we really haven't seen to this right, point in right. the season. And I, I know it's because there's a little bit extra pressure from their defense or a good defensive team. But I think uh, the big thing is going to be take care of the ball. Right, right. And, the, and you know, I don't think it's lost on any of these boys of, of the importance of what this game feels like as well. So that always adds a little bit of extra pressure or stress, I think, sometimes to a team on like, hey, what do we do here to, um, you know, take care of the ball or, or whatever. So it is, uh, you know, those things, you're exactly right. And I think they're also going to need to really work at when they do finally, you know, they do a good job of boxing out understand that if they come down with the rebound they have to secure it say, because it's been yeah it's been knocked away a number in. of times yeah and uh, and the refs have been calling it so i think if they come down strong with the ball and then someone comes down and tries to knock it away uh they've been right on top of it as far as calling those um those fouls now for uh we kind of talked about the bobcats uh foul troubles patterson really the only one with three fouls but uh smith nicholas and england all with two as well all playing a number of minutes for them so uh, really besides Cam Johnson um, all five starters for them uh, could potentially end up in foul trouble uh, for the Bobcats uh, minus Potter and Longwell uh, Zach Hasey has two Weber has one and Armani Dukes has one so um, really besides the two two there uh, no one in too bad of foul trouble so Monty Dukes might be getting that um, assignment there early if uh, you know Patterson comes in just to kind of try to keep uh, Potter and Longwell from picking up their fourth foul. Well, and I think the big thing is, Kevin, with that situation, take the ball, put the ball in the paint. We talked right. about that, and then when we've done that, we've gotten to the line. So, you know, I think you just pound the ball into the paint when we're open, be aggressive, go up strong, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to get to the line and uh, see some vacations uh, for some of their players. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to do it for us on this halftime show. We have a couple minutes before the end of the half. We're going to take a minute and get a word from our sponsors. Appreciate those of you listening on 101.7 KDNO and also those of you streaming live um, on the YouTube channel YO Today. Uh, streaming that if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to it. Hit that bell. Get uh, notifications anytime we get a game started. We're going to take a brief break here. We'll be back for second half Bobcat basketball right after this. Is Bailey Enterprises. For over 50 years, Bailey has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey. I'm Travis Winger. I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And we do, you know, I pride myself on helping people with financial planning, uh, achieving whatever goals are most important to them. The most valuable thing you have when it comes to planning for your future is time. The, the sooner you start and the more detailed your plan is, the better chance of success you have. First timers are my favorite people to work with because they're hungry to learn and coming to see me doesn't cost anything. I don't charge for appointments, I don't charge for anything. Come in, talk to me, and all you'll leave with is a little bit more knowledge than you came in with. Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Travis Winger, 435 Arapahoe Street, Thermopolis. All right, and we're back here as uh, second quarter action. Second gets, half. Second half action gets started here. Uh, Bobcats will get it, and uh, Zach Casey with it now up at the top of the key. Looks like they're going to stay in man-to-man -man is Buffalo. Gerber back over to Hasey, back to Gerber. Gerber over to Bomagen. And back to Gerber. Gerber drives in, pump fake. And gets it over to Bomagen, up to the high post. Back oh, to Gerber. Pass. Zach nice Hasey in the corner and knocks nice. it down. <laughs> Zach Hasey lighting it up from three-point land today. Gives them the lead, 26-22 over the top of the Bison. Good shot there. Good extra pass too. Good ball movement. I touched all five players that that uh, possession. Oh, Patterson Ronnie. does come in. Oh, Ooh, and Johnson Ouch. looked like man looked like he rolled his ankle a little bit. Yeah, I, that's oh. not a And uh, like Zach Hasty, yeah, Zach Hasty comes away with the ball and then just dribbles it out of bounds. Didn't go off his foot. I not sure what happened. I don't. Yeah, just he knows he messed up. But. Yeah. Mac ready to play defense. Yeah, empty empty possession, unfortunately, there. Would have been big after getting the turnover and then uh, picked up the ball early there. Eli Patterson has it. Monty Duke's going to get the assignment to guard him. Good defense there. Good help by Bomagen as well. 
Bobcats really have done a, such a oh. good job of playing help defense. Shot is up, no good. And Longwell comes down with the rebound. Gonna get it into Bomagin's hand. Bomagin up the side, gets it over oh, to Gerber. Gerber, Gerber for three. three. Shot is up, and no good off the, oh, oh I thought Cody was gonna have, gonna have a rebound, rebound there. I think he got tripped. All right, Cam Johnson now with the ball. He's gonna try to kick it out here to Huber. Huber, uh, Engling. Engling now has it, shot is up, no good. And Boy, Patterson comes hard. down with the rebound. Patterson wanting to get on the board, not able to finish. Ball is gonna go off of Bomagin's gonna stay to the Bison. So again, if we get to hold them to one one shot, one and done, it would be. We're just not blocking no, out, Kev. They're, they're going for the board, but they're not blocking out, right. which at this level you've got to do. Patterson shot is up, no good. And Longwell come oh, away, but unfortunately stepped out of bounds. Uh, Zach and Armani did a great job holding Patterson uh, from getting his uh, rebound and then uh, just uh, Jet and getting the. Yeah, uh, just slipped a little bit when yep. his foot came down and went out of bounds. Pass Ooh. over to Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson up. Had a good second quarter. Zach Hasty comes down with the ball. Good rebound there. Gets it in to Bomagin and then back to Hasty. Back over to Bomagin up the sideline. And then back into Hasty's hands. Over to Gerber. Gerber back over to Hasty. And now Monty up at the high Whoa. post. Way high. Uh, Two hand pass up way up over the top. I thought Bomagin was, well, he got up <laughs> high enough to get a hand on it, but not really able to do much with it. I so only could do one hand, it was so right. high. 26 22, two minutes gone here in this uh, third quarter. Bobcats holding on to that four point lead right now. Unfortunately, a couple of not unnecessary turnovers. Yeah, just those empty possessions don't help. Huber's three uh. from the corner is up and good. Had a great first quarter, yeah, was held he scoreless in the second but knocks down a three there 26 25 now gerber with it he's going to drive in oh she passes on the pull-up jumper gets it to cody bombagin bombagin from 16 feet out shot is up no good patterson comes down with the rebound and that's the difference right we're getting yep. one and done and they're getting multiple shots well, at the, the guys at the are hoop. crashing right the shot goes up you don't see white underneath the basket like you see black on the other right end. absolutely cam johnson with it here passes to england england did Cam Johnson, Cam Johnson, three is up, no good. Good box out there by Monty and Zach. And uh, Monty comes away with the board, gets it to Bomagin, cross court to Hasty, to Monty in the middle. Monty drive through some pressure. He's gonna drive through, gets it to Bomagin. One hand pass over to Gerber, Gerber to Hasty. Hasty, who's knocked down Deep one three. early, knocks another oh, one down. Oh, Zach Hasty, that's his good. third of the game, isn't it, Kev? It is, and a good He's time. Lighten it up. That's good and for Zach, he needs a uh, game to that's right. Get on the books. Oh, and a turnover there by Bison. Gerber comes away with it. He's going to drive it in. All the drive way. Drive it in all the way and get a blocking oh. foul called there. He'll go I to agree. the line. Anytime another player's running alongside of you and then just tries to stop, I never expect yeah. a charge call. Sometimes it happens, but that's going to be Smith's Well, third like you foul. say, he was exactly just right along with him. He wasn't ahead and getting set. So, so Gerber will go to the line 4-2. Scores 29-25 with 4.35 left in the uh, third quarter. First shot is up and rattles, rattles in and out. And Brody Potter will come in for uh, Longwell. Longwell doing a great job playing with Absolutely. those uh, three fouls. So Potter will get to come in and try to do the same. So try to be a rim protector a little bit more. And Gerber's second shot is up and good. So he makes good on one of two free throws there to make it a 30 to 25 lead for the Bobcats. Uh, no one's picking up the ball just yet. Gerber kind of has to Ooh. leave his guy to come over. Somebody missed, missed yeah, assignment. I think, uh, I think Potter, oh, shot is up, no good by Patterson. So Hasty goes up high, gets the ball, passes up to Potter. Potter gonna get a chance at the rim, oh. gets it, no, sh shot is up and challenged by Johnson is up and no easy, good. And then Patterson easy. comes away with it. Patterson gonna drive in, passes over, and oh, oh they're gonna call. Uh, Goaltending? No, gonna give, oh, give him a technical foul. for slapping the backboard. That was Cody, I think. No, I think it was Potter. Was it? Yeah. I don't, but it's, it shouldn't, it uh, hasn't been a technical, and it hasn't been a technical for long, a long time, I think. If anything, I could see maybe interference, and they call the, the ball good. I mean, it's not it's not Brody's fault that the backboards are as loose as they are. So when they do get hit, I mean, there's some movement on it. You can still see that it's shaking, but it's not because he wasn't trying to go for the block. 
So I'm not sure what the call is going to be here. They are going to call a technical, it looks like, on That's Potter. That's a frustrating call. Yeah, it really is. So we'll see here what they did call that against Brody, which is unfortunate because that is going to be his fourth, his first technical. And uh, that'll be the team's first foul in this quarter as well. So that will send to the free throw line is Engling. I'm not sure what the discussion now is. Because how many shots? Right, because there wasn't a foul on the shot. It was just a. So it should just be a one shot. Technical. Well, no, that's just uh, that's just NBA. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. yeah. Any technicals are two shots. First one is up and no good. Score remains 30 to 25, 404 on the clock, third period. Angling uh, getting his second of two technical foul shots. And then they will get the ball, the possession of the ball as the ball second is yes. up and in. Bounces up and around and in. So uh, Longwell will come in for Potter. And uh, rightfully so, I think Coach is uh, just encouraging Potter, just saying, hey, we, you know, we understand not the, not the greatest call. But uh, so now Bison will maintain possession of the ball after the technical foul with a four point lead for the Bobcats. Pass over to Cam Johnson. Pass inside into England and then they're gonna call a foul on uh, Cody Bomagen as he kind of jumps up at the same time. So he'll pick up his first, team second. Well, there's definitely been a lot of contact down there between the two, but that's the first one they've actually called them. Right. Patterson with play. the ball here, and he goes up. Ball is no good. So that extra rest, like we kind of talked about, did it just uh, maybe uh, made it a little tough. He's had a number of shots around the rim, unable to finish. Pass over to Bomagen. Bomagen, oh, a tough pass into Monty Dukes. Turnover there as Peters has it. Oh, Zach Casey almost gets a Euro step there by Peters to go up and score. 28-30 now, Bobcats lead. Trail down to two, Bomagen has it. Pass out to Zach Hasty over to Gerber. Gerber back to Hasty. Up to Monty Dukes, kicks out to Bomagen. Bomagen for the three, shot is nice good. Nice shot from the uh, left side of the court. Bomagen up for three. Patterson bringing the uh, ball down, no pressure currently. Yeah, good ball movement by the Bobcats too. Monty Dukes guarding Patterson. Oh, good good defense there, is, uh, could have been called a kick uh, ball there. I was gonna there. say, but it wasn't intentional, so I think right. it's... Uh, and back door oh, cut good there. hands Gerber by Gerber. Steals it, gets back it to Bomagen. <laughs> he, he, he knocked that <laughs> loose and then backhanded it uh, behind his back to the uh, Jet Longwell. Oh, oh. Bomagen throwing it to, uh, I think, where he thought Longwell had been when before he caught the ball, but Longwell had gone to the opposite side. Peters left open in the corner, going to fake the three. Gets it kicked back up to the top to Engling. And now into Johnson. And good shot is movement. up and no good. Longwell taps it out, but Cam Johnson comes away with it. Longwell leaves his feet. That leaves Nicholas open for the three. Shot is up, no good. And Monty Duke's gonna have to chase it down, and he does. And gets the ball to Longwell. Good, holding. good job holding the ball. And Gerber left open Deep for the three. three. Shoot three is up, no good. Cam Johnson there. Gerber almost picked up a foul. Yeah. And Johnson comes away with the ball. Scores 33-28. We got 204 left in the third. Good game here, kind of what we anticipated That's right. by uh, by the Bobcats and Bison. Cam Johnson Ooh, with a the travel trouble. there as he right. steps into a good defense by Jet Longwell as he plays good defense. Del Duke set to come in. He's going to come in for Monty, who's been working hard on Patterson. So it'll be interesting to see who uh, draws that assignment. Yeah, who draws that assignment. It might be Dell, but I'm guessing it'll be Longwell potentially. I would Zach think it Hasty, would be. good. Ooh. Oh, almost had it there and Peters ends up picking up the steal but again kind of some lackadaisical passing there uh, between, it's so. almost a no look pass that they're trying to do we right. had two of those that got us in trouble so Bison with it up at the top of the key Del Dukes does pick up Patterson Patterson step up jump no shot gets it to Del Dukes Del over to Bomagen Bobby Bom Bomagen is going <laughs> to drive up left hand shot no good Peters comes down with it Bobby you, maybe you should have named him Bobby Bomagen that would have been a That's fun my name dad's to say. name oh, Robert right, awesome. so he grew up like that <laughs> uh -huh. and almost a steal there by Gerber but a uh, couple guys on the floor there and Patterson will get it up at the top so uh, pace of the game kind of pressure of the game starting to be felt here by both teams I think as they're pressing a little bit 
Engling with it here, gets it over to Peters. Peters with a left-hand shot. Deep is shot. up Whoa. and good. About six shot, he fell down after the shot. Uh, the ref fortunately catched him, caught him. Yeah, 33-31. Too Longwell, Longwell, tough pass to Del Dukes. Del Dukes out to Bombajin. Bombajin gonna step up. Three up and in. Oh, good. A it's the front of the rim. Jumps up about three feet above the rim and drops in. Man, hit the front of the rim, but shooter's touch always pays off. So it rolls right over and drops in. 36, 31, 30 seconds left on the clock. Patterson has oh, it. Oh, great good pass, pass by Patterson. Better defense Blocked by Bombajin as he blocks oh, it. Gerber has Gerber it. Gerber behind the back. the back. Passes to the Hasty up ahead. Zach Goes Hasty. Deep. Pulls up and oh, knocks down the has got three, 39-31. Three, three 17 seconds left in the third. Three in this quarter for Zach, Zach Hasty. Zach Hasty is play. on fire. That is five threes for the Bobcats in this quarter, being their only buckets that they have knocked down. They will take them. Absolutely, five seconds left. Patterson, Patterson pull up deep. three. Shot is up and Nothing good. Nothing but net for Patterson, 34-39. And you hate to see again right at the end of the quarter. Wow. You know, that's six points the Bison have hit at the end of quarter. So Bobcats lead 39-34 going into the fourth quarter. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. Looking for a clean, comfortable room in Thermopolis? Quality Inn of Thermopolis offers great rates with your choice of king, queen, or family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Reserve your room today. Call 307-864-5515. Amenities include free hot breakfast, pet-friendly, premium free Wi-Fi, indoor pool, truck parking, and more. Reserve your room today by calling 307-864-5515. Quality Inn of Thermopolis. All right, and Bobcat basketball, we're back here as the Bobcats are in their uh, home opening weekend, um, coming away with a big win against Glen Rock Herders last night and in a tough battle here today against the Buffalo Bison, up 39-34 going into the fourth quarter. Um, but exactly what we expected, we mentioned that a couple times, but there was no doubt this was going to be a hard-fought battle for the Bobcats. So, they have eight minutes now to maintain what they've been able to do for uh, the first three quarters. Uh, hopefully extend this five-point lead and uh, finish this game off. Bison will start out with the ball. And uh, Huber has it for him. He'll get it into Peters. Peters being a big contributor here in this uh, game. Ooh. He's the fake. <laughs> I thought he was gonna, He did. He they're traveled. Gonna, yeah, they're going to call another one. So it's been a call that, again, because of the way the you know college and NBA is being played that uh, doesn't seem to get called as often. But uh, today, these refs have been right on it. So um, it's been both both sides. Del Dukes Oop. has a tough pass to Zach Casey, but Zach Made gets it. nervous. It, me too. Del Dukes now has it. He's going to drive 15-foot jump shot. Oh. Good jump shot by Del Dukes. Del Dukes drives aggressively just inside the free, free throw line up and in. I love how he surprises me. Yeah. I just He just does some <laughs> things that surprises. are so good. Shot is up and no good Ooh. by Cam Johnson. Out of bounds off of Buffalo's foot. Oh, man, and I thought they were going to get Del Dukes with an inadvertent, just no. kind of put his arm out, box out, and Peters kind of clotheslined himself off of it. Yeah, no, that was, that was but, a good call. Uh, Del Dukes did a little Red Rover, Red Rover there and worked out back and forth between Cole and <sighs> uh, Hasty. Tough pass there for just Monty. The right pass, able to, just a little bit too much yeah. on it. And Peters again goes up. Shot is up. No good. Monty oh, Dukes Monty comes down with it. Ball. And Great play. And kickball uh, kick ball there by uh, Patterson. But, man, again, uh, Zach and Will both waiting for the pass but almost <laughs> needed to come over a little bit, give him a better angle to come over to. So Bomagin, oh, Bomagin set to come in. They are going to let allow him to come in for Del Dukes. 41-34 now, Bobcats lead, uh, not quite a minute gone in this fourth quarter. Will Cole has it, gets it back to Zach Casey. Zach into Monty. Good play there, good good decision yeah. by Monty on that one. Just catch it and let him clear out. Zach Casey goes in, Will Cole will Ooh, travel. travel there too. And again, uh, just those uh, 
those little hop steps are just not going to be allowed. It uh, looks like uh, Buffalo, Buffalo is going to take that timeout. 41-34. Bobcats lead this one. We will be back for Bobcat basketball right after this. Stop in to Vicklin Pharmacy in Thermopolis to see what a hometown pharmacy really feels like. It's the only locally owned and operated pharmacy in town, and they are a compounding pharmacy to boot. They offer prescriptions, medical equipment, Medicare open enrollment, medication therapy management, and more. Vicklin Pharmacy can save you time and money. The service you deserve from the neighbors you trust. Vicklin Pharmacy, conveniently located inside Max Market in Thermopolis. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. All right, and we're back after the timeout. Buffalo Bison will come out with the ball after calling a full timeout. Down seven points to the Bobcats, 41-34. 6.54 left on the clock, fourth quarter. Bobcats have come out uh, being very aggressive on the offense and defensive and had good ball movement so far in the early few minutes of this fourth quarter. Peters with it back to Huber. Huber over to Johnson. Johnson looks for Patterson. Back to Johnson. And Bobcat staying in like that 2-3 zone. Three Peters, again. another deep three. Shot is up, Ooh, no, no good. Longwell expecting it to come up higher off the glass and it goes to the corner. Johnson ends up with it. Again. Now Cam Johnson left open and shot is up, no good. But Jet Longwell comes down with it and gets it over to Bomage and Bomage will bring it up. Kind of clears out, no pressure. Will has it, happy feet going on there. Makes <laughs> me nervous. <laughs> oh, and then a tip pass, oh, good. Monty, good down hustle. by Monty Dukes. Dribbles out of trouble. Yeah. Dribbles out of trouble and then gets in trouble. So Coach uh, is like, ah, going to call you out. a quick timeout. We'll stay right here for this timeout as well as it'll be a 30 second. But uh, man, Travis, um, you know, when uh, I think all we did in the pregame show was talk up uh, how good Patterson was going to be and everything and, and what he could bring. And the Bobcats have uh, recognized that. And man, have really stepped up and played tough defense against him. Well, I've just, uh, the defensive end, again, is what's keeping us in the game, Kev. Right, you know, absolutely. We're, we're not doing it on the boards. We're, uh, we've are we pulled out of our kind of offensive slump, uh, hitting the ball a little bit better this uh, last two quarters. And so if they can maintain that energy on the defensive end, hopefully uh, continue hitting the shots on the offensive end, hopefully you can finish right. out. But And just being, uh, I just... Uh, being more cautious with the ball. I feel yeah, like we've exactly. just been a little more Aaron of just kind of tossing it wherever, you know, instead of that real good solid step through hard two hand chest pass, you know, to, to get it to whoever they are trying to throw it to, to really pay off. So Bobcats will have the ball here. Bomagin uh, will take it out. Potter um, back in for the Bobcats with those four fouls, picking up that questionable technical. Yeah. And then a cross court pass, try to Gerber. Eli Patterson's gonna get it and patiently goes and uh, ends up making the shot. It took him a little bit to get that yeah, shot up, but was, was to able to make foul. it. Yeah, I agree ah. with you. And then another turnover there. trying to make there. that pass to the middle and they're guarding it. They know it's coming. 41-36 oh, now Zach as Tasty will tip the ball out. And looks like Huber maybe got a hand on it as well, but they are gonna call that off of Hasty. And looks like Patterson will take it out. Bobcat's gonna stay in that 2-3 zone. 41, 36, 546 on the clock. Engling with the ball here. Going to cross court pass over Huber. to Huber. Huber Yikes. with the three off the back of the glass. Bombagin up high to get the rebound. Good rebound there. And Bombagin is going to dribble out of trouble, get it to Gerber. Gerber across too hasty. Back to Gerber. Be careful oh, in the man. middle. They guard that yep. middle. And Zach Hasty tries ah. to dribble through. It had it had a. He Monty. told them, do yep. not dribble through, through that yep. uh, press. Patterson kicks it out to Engling. Engling's three up. No good. Bomagin comes away with it, kicks it up to Gerber. Gerber going to hang on to it, Ooh. gets it to Potter. Potter over to Zach. Zach, Zach feeling again, it. Deep. Three is up. And oh, no good. Patterson the, comes uh, down with the rim. rebound. So five minutes, just over five minutes left here in the fourth quarter, 41-36. Bobcats still hanging on to a five-point lead. And staying in that 2-3 zone. Get it into England. England shot nice is up pass. and good. Good spin move in the middle. 
Now at this point, Kevin, we were just talking about how good they were taking care of the ball in the last couple of possessions. We just haven't had great shots because we right. aren't taking care of the ball, but there Brody draws a foul. Yeah, he does from uh, zero. Kai Peters, it's his first foul. Teams first, not a lot of fouls called in this second half. Actually, only three total fouls, one of which was a technical foul. Gerber gonna come out uh, in play, or Del Duke's in in place of Gerber. Zach Casey set to take it out. Oh, great and good pass. play there. And oh, four Brody on Potter uh, Patterson. Goes in and Patterson's gonna pick up his fourth, but uh, puts Potter to the line, four, two. Good attack of the rim. Would have liked to have seen him finish through the contact. Yeah. Um, that's a big body to go through as well. Potter set to shoot his first free throw, or, or um, third free throw of the game. Is up and good, oh, good shot. Great shot by Potter. A little flatter than his normal shot, but he just ekes it over the, uh, <laughs> front of the rim. I like to see elevation. I like right. Monty's shots because I feel a lot better about that's right. the physics of that. 42-38, <laughs> Bobcats lead. Second free throw is up off the front of the rim. Rolls over and is good. All so right. good shooting. Three of four from the three-point er, free throw point line. lead again. Cam Johnson with the ball now. Bobcats staying in that two threes or man-to-man -man defense now. Dell Dukes out on Peters. Monty Dukes playing good defense against Patterson. Cross court. Oh, Dell Dukes, Del Dukes, Dukes here he comes. It oh, he and steals tries it. to save it to Hugh, and then Huber comes away with it. Huber driving up the line. He's going to be patient. Zach Casey Bobcats on him. Can get back on deep. And good hustle Time by uh, again, Del Buffalo. Dukes there. Just taking some time off. 43-38. Bobcats with the lead. We're going to take a quick timeout as well. We'll be right back. And uh, timeout about over here, 4.15 left in this fourth quarter. And uh, Bobcats holding on to a five-point lead, 43-38, in what's going to be a tough uh, 3A um, hard-fought game for Bobcats. Where do uh, timeouts come into play, Kev? There have been a lot of timeouts called this half. I don't right. know if Buffalo has anymore, and I think uh, Bobcats may only have two. Right. Man, quick to get Ooh. the ball in. Cam Johnson with the three. Shot is up. No good. Brody, Brody Potter, Potter comes down, away with long it. Long pass up to, to Zach Hasty. Casey. Hasty's going to have a chance. Oh. Shot is up. No good, but they are no, going to call a on foul the on the floor. And they're going to call that one, I believe, on uh, Kai Peters. So three team fouls for them. Scores 43-38. 4.06 left on the clock. They have three fouls. Bobcats have zero. And they're going to call that not a They're going to call that not a shooting foul. So I think... Uh, so I think Gorpany yeah. just questioning on why he, they weren't calling that a shooting foul and called it on the ground. So um, because of that, they didn't have a play in, so they needed to call a timeout, so they didn't get a violation there as well. So um, the so both teams are a little bit short of uh, timeouts, right, which right. with um, four minutes left in the game, that could uh, come be a factor. It could, it could, and uh, that was one. It's it's funny that the group of refs are very quick with uh, trying to get these boys to get the ball in and, and checked in, and they've done it with both both teams, so teams have to be set and ready to play defense or, I guess, offense in, in that case of having something there. I kind of almost would have rather him hung on to it. I think they could have got the ball in. It might not have been a set play, but probably could have got it in and, and then just ran a play through there instead of having to take a Probably a very valuable timeout, but Bobcats hanging on 43-38. They will have the ball out of bounds. We have uh, both both Duke boys, Monty and Dell in, Cody Bomagin, Brody Potter, and Zach Hasty in for the Bobcats set to take the ball out um, with this uh, lead here. Looks like Huber, Peters, Johnson, Ingling, and Patterson in for the Buffalo Bison. Looks like they're going to come in man-to-man. -man. Going to set up a little bit of a different play there. Didn't quite work out, but good defense there. Uh, good four fouls. Pow, a good play there as Zach Hasey throws it up high to Bomagin. Bomagin goes up and get it. Huber going to pick up his first, but teams four. So Bobcats will go to the line the last four minutes of this game. 
Passes into Zach Hasty. Peters tries to swipe away at it, not able to get it away. Zach gonna Ooh, drive Zach's. in and goes Ooh, in tough. No, no foul there as Peters kind of all over him, but they're not gonna call it. And Peters comes no, away Zach, with it. Don't do it. And Peters goes up. Potter kind of had to play off because of his four, four fouls. fouls. And 43-40 uh, now. Uh, not the best sequence for the Bobcats in that play there. Well, they're just riding Zach. Zach I can't believe it. Goes that back they're... up, and they're going to call a foul on there. Okay, so Zach will get to the line. Two shots either way, whether it's on the floor, uh, floor or not. Third foul for Peters now. And score I, is 43-40. Yeah, glad they glad they got the foul, but I'd also like Zach to just recognize the importance of the game. Yeah. Not maybe rush those. Uh, First not shot just, is up and no yeah, good. Kind of a frustration drive those last two times. So first one is up and no good. 43-40, 3.30 left here in this fourth quarter. So I think they're going to be uh, subbing Potter in and out for uh, defense. So uh, Longwell playing defense and Potter coming back on offense depending on the ball right. or dead ball status. Both free throws not good for Zach Hasty on that one. So keeps it at 43-40. Huber with the ball for the Bison. Bobcats go back into that 1-3-1 one, one defense. Cam Johnson now has it in the corner. Pass to Patterson. Patterson, 15-foot jumper oh, shot is up and good. Great shot by Patterson. 43-42 now as Bobcats. One point lead, three minutes uh, the left in the game. Monty needs to get rid of the ball a little quicker out of that pressure. Back they over to get Zach. Over the now it is Longwell. We Longwell, tough pass. Right oh, to he get traveled. Monty. Patterson gets it. Ah, Patterson yeah, traveled he... when he caught it. And pass up the sideline to Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson now going to get the ball. Bison with an opportunity to take a lead here, and they're going to call a timeout That's again here. Timeout, so I believe that is their last timeout. So 2.44 left here in this uh, fourth quarter, 43-42. Uh, Bobcats hanging on to a one-point lead. Full timeout, we'll take one as well. We'll be right back. For a place to relax, sip on your favorite specialty lattes or tea, and find the best gifts for any occasion, Storyteller is the place for you. Books brimming with compelling stories, gifts for the kids like Legos and coloring projects, and something for your family and friends like hats, jewelry, or a bag of award-winning Mountain Air Roasted Jackrabbit Java. To learn more, visit StorytellerYO.com or swing by at 524 Broadway in Thermopolis. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card. Got a big project? Choose special financing. The choice is yours with Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payment required. See store for details only at Sutherland's. All right, uh, timeout here uh, is over, so we're gonna get action back in here. 2:44 left, 43:42, and uh, Bobcats hanging on to a one-point lead. Bison with the ball here. Patterson will get it. Gonna get it over to the corner. Good defense by Zach Casey as it goes out of bounds, and uh, Bobcats will get possession. So good defense there. See if uh, might like need a little just, help. Yeah, Cody Bomagen comes up to get it. Gets it back over to Zach Casey, over to Del Dukes. Del up to sidelines of Brody Potter. Good hands by Potter. He's going to attack the rim. Nice Good job, Potter. In. They kind of le left off him, and he's like, I'm still going. That's right. I Three think point they were, lead. I think there was a group of boys that didn't want to become a poster is what <laughs> happened there, so they just got out of the way. Bobcats now into a man-to-man. -man. Potter going to play out on Cam Johnson. Wide open is Peters. Ugh. Peters step back three up. No good. Good box out by Bomagen. Bomagen going to be able to chase it down as Patterson tries to throw it off of him. Going to call a timeout for Bobcats oh, as well. Lead. So I think there's only 10 total timeouts in a game between the two teams, but we're on we've timeout 25, I think. <laughs> we've called six in the last five minutes. That's right. So it's going to be a full timeout. We're going to do the same. We'll come right back. 45-42, Bobcats leading. You work hard for those you love putting in long hours because your family's hopes and dreams are worth saving for that's why bighorn federal offers multiple ways to save our products can help you start saving for more immediate needs and future goals today 
Talk to your local branch about an interest-bearing checking or savings account, education IRA, Roth IRA, CD, or health savings account from Bighorn Federal. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. A proud sponsor of this broadcast is Bailey Enterprises. For over 50 years, Bailey has become the name you can trust. With pit stop travel centers, you can fuel up and stock up on trip snacks at locations all over Fremont County. You can also put your trust in Bailey Tire and Auto for service to keep handy for those times when your luck runs out on the road. Refresh at the Speedway Cafe with a dine-in meal or a round of carry-out with a variety of specials to keep you going. Go with Bailey. All right, and uh, come out after the timeout. Bobcats with the ball, 2.12 left in this contest in the slowest uh, time possible in a quarter. It feels like Bobcats leading 45-42, going to come up against this three-quarter press from the Bison. Oh, not a good pass from Potter to Dell Dukes. Patterson's going to get it, and an easy layup for Patterson. Exactly what they didn't need to do. And another tough pass from Potter to Monty. Oh, Monty going to cut it through. Passes to Dell Dukes. Dell with an easy layup nice of his own. Nice job, Armani. Good what job. a great from, step through yes, that it uh, was. trap. Well, he'd kind of been just patiently trying to let them go, and then this time he finally just turned and went, and then a great no-look pass to Dukes, which... Uh, Minute 38 on the finished. clock, 47-43. Bobcats still with the lead. Three-point lead here. Ooh. Engling with it. Jump pass into Patterson. Patterson not able to finish it. Monty Dukes playing good defense straight up. Has to kick it back out to Cam Johnson. And then ball goes up in the air. Oh. Up in the air still. Cam Johnson comes away with it. And now Huber, Huber has deep a deep three. three. Shot is up and off the front of the rim. Good, good box job, up by Zach Casey. And then they're going to nice call a job. push foul by Huber. All right. Good box out. So Zach Casey going to have a chance to redeem himself and make a couple of free throws here. Well, and the key is there, Zach would not have got that because it was a deep three and it came way off, but Zach had blocked him out and so perfect block out and what we've been talking about, you block the guy out, then you go get the rebound. Right, and good, good defense by uh, Monty Dukes down oh, there as absolutely. well because he just stayed straight up on Patterson. Mm -hmm. Free throw is up and no good for Zach Hasty. 47-44, uh, 115 left here in this fourth quarter. So coming in for the first time for the... Bison is Connor Rodriguez. Um, big fella there probably to get a box out on Potter on this free throw. Shot is up there and it goes. good. So good shot there Four by Zach Casey. Lead, minute 15 left. Makes it a two possession game for the Bobcats. Just over a minute left. And uh, Bobcats come out. Huber goes in. Tough defense there. Potter going to have to play out on Cam Johnson a little bit. Don't let him shoot the ball. Johnson He's knocked down a hit. couple. Yeah. Huber now with the ball. Zach Casey playing out on him tough. Wanted Drive to in by Cam Johnson. Hey, and Huber, Huber comes wide back open. with the ball. Shot is up and knocks it down. Big shot there by Huber. Knocking down his third three of the game. Makes it a one point game. 48-47. Under a minute left. Tough pass to Potter. Potter oh, gets it. Potter Goes does. Oh. Shoots it and makes Only it. Only way that would have been better is if he dunked Absolutely. it. But he wanted to make sure he Absolutely. made that because there was a couple of those oh, no. almost dunks. Left open three. Patterson left open. Oh, good play there. Rodriguez getting the ball for the first time. Huber deep three. 25 seconds left in this game. Bobcats lead by three. Don't want oh, to let deep the three, three fly. Huber, Huber oh, and knocks real. down another one Huber to tie the game. Hit three no, no deep threes left this for quarter. either team. Zach Casey going to bring it up. Going to oh, get fouled by Huber. Going to send Zach I don't know Casey about that. Was to a good, the game. That wasn't a good call. I, I agree. I think that was just good defense, and uh, I'm not sure what the call was. I think. Oh, I, reaching oh, around said, the back. Yeah, said okay, he kind of grabbed his hip. Okay. Turned him. So uh, Huber does pick up his third foul. That sends Zach Casey to the line to four free throws. Dead 14 game. and a half seconds. First one is up. Uh, and good. And good. Zach missed his first two, missed a third of his uh, second two, then has made the next two. That's right. What's the ref saying? And we'll see what we're calling here. Looks like there'll be one shot now. Not sure what, what the call was there. It was good. Yeah, they counted the bucket. Okay, so 51-50, Bobcats lead. Not sure. I think it was just an inadvertent whistle by um, thinking maybe there was going to be a timeout. Second one is up and good. Oh, Zach huge Hasty, shot by huge. Zach Hasty. Okay, timeout call by the Bobcats. That gives them a 52 50 lead. Gonna have to have hands up. Oh, I'll tell uh, you what, 
The uh, Bobcats have not been in this position, Kevin, against right. a team of this caliber. Buffalo has uh, had a little bit more opportunity with that. They are making uh, some changes. They're pulling Bomagen out and putting uh, Longwell in, going for the defensive show. Right, and uh, Ellis Weber comes in as well to put on some uh, some plays well. And it's not sure if we have a 30-second timeout or a full 30. timeout. They so thought it was a full. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I think the ref called it or, you know, made the indication it was full. And then the other ref said, no, it was just a 30. So uh, with that, Bobcats leading 52-50. Uh. You're right. Um, you know, Bison having a little bit more experience with this uh, as far as maybe some close games. But Bobcats with a chance here. Their gonna, composure's been good, though. It has I been. I mean, they have not been rattled, not acting nervous. They've ha they maintained the lead. And when it's right. got tied up, they've done good, smart things taking care of the ball. Right. And uh, without a doubt, they're going to have to have a hand up in Huber's face. He's knocked down two massive Absolutely. threes in this game. Going to have to know well, where he's isn't at. Isn't he the one that hit the 30-foot uh, uh, shot at yep. the end of the quarter? He is. That's it. He's hit four threes in this game. So full court pressure going to come for the Bobcats. Going to run a little kind of interesting play here. 13 seconds left in the game. Patterson with the ball. It'll be interesting to see if they go for the win or they go for a tie. Patterson's going to have a chance at the rim. Shot is up. No good. Longwell up high for the rebound. He's going to get it. And we're going to get it. Foul on the rebound by Longwell. Longwell going to have a chance to ice, ice this game. the game. If he makes two, it's a game over. If he does not make, if he makes one, then it's it's a lot it's safer. A chance. 3.8 seconds left in this game. Longwell will go to the line. Bobcat's going to have to be careful here on uh, no fouls. No fouls on this rebound. Almost would like to see them be in for maybe this first free throw out for the second yeah, just I so don't they don't get a cheap with that foul. At all. Except they don't have any fouls in this quarter, so a foul wouldn't really hurt them in this um, instance if they went up for. Uh, oh, oh, bounces oh, all the way it. around the front of the back of the rim and then drops oh. through. So 53 53 or 4.3 seconds left on the clock. That's right. Buffalo calls timeout. And timeout number 52 no, is I guess <laughs> taken for the. Oh, they're, yeah, Bobcats, 30 seconds so uh, for them. 30 second timeout, so uh, looks like they added some time they to the did, clock. because so it was 3.8. Yeah, so 4.3, half a second back on the on the clock, 53.50. Um, Longwell's going to have a chance to uh, shoot a second free throw. Be huge. If they yep. make it, it uh, pretty seals much the deal. seals the game. Unless um, they uh, make a three with a foul. Well, That'd be right, their only right. chance. Yeah, just lay off if you if you make it. <laughs> exactly. just, just let it go. And, and honestly, even if they make a shot, Grab the ball, hang it outside. If That's you're right. under five seconds, yeah. no time's going to come off. You don't even have to throw the ball in. So no one panic. Just hang on to the ball. So well, well, I'm like you. I think I would pull them off of the, uh, well, I guess you're right. Cause yeah, you could go for it here now just because. Um, but I go for the make. Uh, Longwell needs to go for the make, not miss. Senior and Longwell, our, our lone starter from last year, up and good. good. And he Longwell ice the ice game. The game. And Longwell going to go up. Cam Johnson going to shoot from the half court. Shot is up. Ooh, no good. Off the back Bobcats of the rim. come away with a win over the number three, bu number two, Buffalo Number Bison. two, that's exactly and, right, uh, Kevin. Great play there by the Bobcats. Um, last time uh, Bison came to Thermopolis and lost to uh, Thermopolis uh, uh, 2020, uh, actually. That really? Yep, that was... Uh, my son Sterling senior year was their senior night against Buffalo and beat them. So good, hard fought game. Sends the Bobcats to five and zero oh on this early in the season. Sends Buffalo Bison to one and four now on the season. That is a huge statement win for these yeah. Bobcats. Um, that's well, gonna that's gonna turn some heads now. That's I think. right. We talked about it last week. Coming out three and zero, oh, but you know the credibility of some of the teams who plays wasn't great. But this weekend, you know, Glenrock was a tough, scrappy team, yeah, but absolutely. Buffalo being number two. That does send a message. I think uh, people are going to be paying a little more attention when they see the Bobcat team uh, on their schedule Absolutely. for the next week. Coming, uh, coming away with the win here, 54-50. We're going to take a quick uh, timeout, come for a post-game show, and uh, let these boys celebrate a big win. We'll be right back after this. I'm Travis Winger. I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And we do, you know, I pride myself on helping people with financial planning, uh, achieving whatever goals are most important to them. The most valuable thing you have when it comes to planning for your future is time. The, the sooner you start and the more detailed your plan is, the better chance of success you have. First timers are my favorite people to work with because they're hungry to learn 
and coming to see me doesn't cost anything. I don't charge for appointments, I don't charge for anything. Come in, talk to me, and all you'll leave with is a little bit more knowledge than you came in with. Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Travis Winger, 435 Arapahoe Street, Thermopolis. At Teton Therapy, our people make the difference. You can live pain-free. The amazing staff at Teton Therapy can help in Lander and Riverton. Looking for a clean, comfortable room in Thermopolis? Quality Inn of Thermopolis offers great rates with your choice of king, queen, or family rooms with bunk beds. Choice hotel members earn points while you stay. Reserve your room today. Call 307-864-5515. Amenities include free hot breakfast, pet-friendly, premium free Wi-Fi, indoor pool, truck parking, and more. Reserve your room today by calling 307-864-5515. Quality Inn of Thermopolis. Thermopolis. Stop in to Vicklin Pharmacy in Thermopolis to see what a hometown pharmacy really feels like. It's the only locally owned and operated pharmacy in town and they are a compounding pharmacy to boot. They offer prescriptions, medical equipment, Medicare open enrollment, medication therapy management and more. Vicklin Pharmacy can save you time and money. The service you deserve from the neighbors you trust. Vicklin Pharmacy conveniently located inside Max Market in Thermopolis. All right, and uh, man, what an amazing game for these boys. Bobcat basketball team making a statement win over the visiting Buffalo Bison. And uh, we get in here into the Click It or Ticket post-game show. Um, and I'm going to go right into our game stats here. Um, so the quality in and suites, um, stats of the game, we'll put these to bed for the night. So. Uh, for the Buffalo Bison, um, uh, it's six scores for them. Uh, Kai Peters comes in off the bench scoring seven points um, all in the second half. Cam Johnson scoring all eight of his points in the second quarter uh, with Patterson on the bench doing kind of uh, kind of picking up the slack work there. Uh, Smith comes in with two points going two of four from uh, the free throw line. Uh, Zane Huber coming up huge for Buffalo Bison as they score 16 points, knocking down four threes and uh, going two or three from the uh, free throw line. Eli Patterson got in foul trouble early, didn't play much in the whole first half, came out two minutes left in the first quarter, didn't get a play at all in the second quarter, and then he did end up scoring nine points in the second half. Brady Engling um, scoring eight, uh, doing a lot of his damage in the first half. Um, foul troubles, not really any for uh, them other than in the first half. Not a lot of fouls called in the second half. Uh, for your Bobcats, um, again, just a number of scoring, seven different scores for the Bobcats. Longwell hitting two massive free throws. Those were his two points in the game, going, knocking <laughs> Great down. Two points, yep, so. yep, going uh, two of two from the free throw line. Gerber knocking down the three, going one of two from the free throw line scoring four points. Bomagin hitting two threes in the third quarter which were huge and a bucket early in the game for his eight points. Uh, Del Duke scoring six being the recipient of some good passes from his brother Armani Duke. Armani like we said in the first quarter doing a great job scored ten points. Uh, didn't score in the second half but played some really really good defense against Patterson boxing him out. Um, Potter Kind of got into foul trouble, but still did some huge things. Got two big points in that fourth quarter. Plus went two to two, a two from the free throw line in the fourth, going three of four overall, scoring nine points. And uh, Zach Hasty knocking down a bunch of threes, uh, three um, in the third quarter, one in the first quarter, and then going three of six from the free throw line, but kind of missing those first three and then knocking down three when they really counted, scoring 15 points for a total of 54 to 50 over the uh, Buffalo Bison, so a huge win for uh, these Bobcats. And again, uh, I just uh, I know it, it's kind of hard to talk now because it's just that excitement of seeing these boys come out and uh, make a big statement win like that uh, against the Buffalo Bison. So um, uh, yeah, it was just a, a great game there. And those are our uh, stats of the game. And um, uh, and then um, again, I you know 
we, we kind of look and we talk about players of the game and everything like that. And really, I mean, there just hasn't been a game where it's just been <laughs> one or the other or anything that just really stands out. I mean, I know we talked Del Dukes' praise last night with um, just kind of just being all over the court and everything. And it just seemed like tonight it was another one of those games where it was like where there was lacking in one place somebody else came in and filled in and then where Very you know something else happened. equal distribution yeah. of credit in regards to that win I agree with Absolutely. you I don't think there's one player you can give it to or even two or three I think it was just the team defense people stepping up offensively when the opportunity was there, absolutely. not being afraid to take the shots. Yeah, absolutely. And and then it was like, you know, Del, or Monty had a great second half, or first half, and then second half didn't score, but somebody else had to step in. So, well, but you absolutely, know, Zach as Hasty you and, said, yeah. he wasn't scoring, but busting his tail on the defensive absolutely. end. And then look at Zach in the sense of the, his first half versus second half. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't scoring much, but then stepped up and kind of took Monty's role that second half. So. Absolutely. So again, five games into it, Five different leading scorers, I think, going in into this as well. Um, just really playing off yeah. uh, off of each other so well in this game, and uh, you know, you can just feel the excitement in the gym. Also, I mean, uh, lots of people uh, stay, you know, to to congratulate this team. It's always awesome to see the um, the tunnel that they get to run through, you know, <laughs> after a, a big win. I think they do the tunnel either way, but it's a lot more fun to run through when, <laughs> when they're uh, high fiving you for winning. So, yeah, and that's uh, as you said before this. We're 5-0, oh, but yep, this one and speaks about three times more than yeah, the other four. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Because I think a lot of times people can say, oh, well, you know, one win was against the 1A team, and, you know, Moorcroft is kind of struggling, and, you know, no one's real sure probably where Wheatland stands this year either and, and everything. So, yeah, to come in. Um, and it to me, it feels like a rivalry game a little bit right. when you play Buffalo because they are a known so team good. and they are so good. So just a big win for these Bobcats to – um, go into the Christmas break now. A lot of work for them to still do. And yep. again, to stay hungry and stay humble. I think that's going to have to be the motto for them as they move forward um, so that they, uh, you know, come in and, and be ready for the for games afterwards. Uh, Pinedale tournament yep. um, will be after the break. Um, so that's where, where we'll be first. And then the next game, they or next weekend, they'll be home for a home tournament. The boys will um we will be, uh, because we both are dads of the boys team, um, we will be following the boys um, to those tournaments where the girls will be in Rollins. We'll do our best to get, um, we'll do our best to make sure we get uh, scores from that tournament as well so we can share that with you and share if there's places you can go and listen to the girls teams um, for uh, right after the break. But um, with that being said, we are uh, just uh, super excited about um, how the Bobcats did and um, and uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back for the post-game show after this. We live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter. Where the snows that fall are a trifle wider. Where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter. That's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming. We're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. All right, and we're back with the Click It or Ticket post-game show here on 101.7 KDNO, uh, home of your Bobcats. And uh, uh, I'm Kevin Gerber. This is Travis Bomagin. We're the voice of the Bobcats here. And uh, just again, I'm sure you can hear it in the excitement of us of how, uh, <laughs> how big that, that game was and uh, how I think relieved we were to finally hear the final oh, buzzer come man, up. That as was well. a slow <laughs> clock the fourth quarter. It's it like, sure oh. was. And uh, so super proud of these boys. Uh, girls had a good weekend, uh, splitting the weekend between Glen Rock and Buffalo. Had a tough one, uh, tough loss tonight against Buffalo, but a uh, big game for the boys Bobcat team. Um, and so, like I said, we're going to have a couple week break here as uh, we get into it. Want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Also, as we get into the 2024 year, which is crazy that it's already here, but uh, wish you all well um, and uh, hope you're able to spend the time with your family and friends. With that, we are going to sign off today. This is 101.7 KDNO and those of you uh, streaming live on Wild Today on YouTube, um, we will see you next year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, everybody. Okay.
For a place to relax, sip on your favorite specialty lattes or tea, and find the best gifts for any occasion, Storyteller is the place for you. Books brimming with compelling stories, gifts for the kids like Legos and coloring projects, and something for your family and friends like hats, jewelry, or a bag of award-winning Mountain Air Roasted Jackrabbit Java. To learn more, visit StorytellerYO.com or swing by at 524 Broadway in Thermopolis. The choice is yours. Sutherland's Friends of the Family Plus Consumer Credit Card lets you choose from 5% off instantly at the register or special financing on qualifying purchases. That means no forms, no waiting, no rebates. You can choose 5% off instantly with your Sutherland's Credit Card.